people are coming right out and saying it, Jim. They want me to be gay with them. But now that you've kind of started, you've uh, you've torn a little bit off the page. You've pulled a little bit of the string off the sweater, and now it's all just becoming undone. Everyone's just coming right out. I'll tell you what else I'll be tearing as well. Your (laughs) anal balls with my penis. Thanks. Hey, ladies. (laughs) Oh, hi, Max. How are you? I'm okay. How's it going? (laughs) I'm okay. I've got a new job now. Really? Really? Yeah, I got promoted on Monday. But are you still a, you still a, like a helper? No, not really, not right now. Oh I'm wow! A, yeah, I uh, they wanted to start a new department where therapists and psychiatrists go out to nursing homes, and some people in nursing homes are like forty, so it's not necessarily that they're old. And um, yeah, I just have to start this program now, and I'm finding that. Business administrators and or big money types are just as crazy as people in locked psychiatric hospitals, except you can't just, like, get them to take medications to stop. Instead, you have to, like, appease them. So, I mean, you've been promoted, essentially, to a real doctor. (laughs) I think that's that's what we're getting at. So, Holmes, could I... Could you, like, send me... You know, like Oxycontin or anything, or yeah. Can you get us some Oxycontin or not? That's a new yeah. weekly. My, my dad, man, my dad's got serious back pain. Does he get? Yeah, I have, I have serious back pain too. That's why I need the Oxycontin. Me as well. I was saying last week I was all laid up with my back. You, so you I have diarrhea. I need Oxycontin. So he needs. So he's got diarrhea. We've all got fucked backs, possibly because of diarrhea. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Podtoid and a new weekly segment. Jonathan Holmes. Can I get some oxycotton or not? Uh, no, no. Can we go down it's, to the, I, I mean, it's not even. I, I don't know what the big deal is. I just, I want some. You know, just go down to the farm and you know, go up to the oxes and just cut off some of their fur and make me some oxycotton. Yeah. Oh no, that's not what it is. No, Max, you've gotten mistaken. It's not what. No, it's the fathers of oxes who they think killed their mother. And then it turns out two kids were wearing a ghost face mask and did it. This doesn't work if you don't remember that Nib Campbell's dad is called Cotton Leary. <laughs> in Scream. Wow. That was impressive. I didn't know you liked the Scream films. That, that was, much. Uh, I, I like Scream. I like a bit of Scream 2. <laughs> haven't seen Scream 3. And I like the poster for Scream 4. So that, I heard Scream 4 was a Scream. treat. Yes, that's what I heard. And Submit, uh, submit you're on the show. I am. Yeah, I haven't done a, I don't yeah. do proper introductions anymore. That's the problem. Well, Ladies I mean, and gentlemen. You should do the introductions. Gonna, and why are you gonna, in a can? Why are you in a giant can? Calm I'm down. Fuck my ass. Let me fuck with the thing again. Okay, ca- calm. Shit, this calm is so down. stupid. I reserved, I reserved a room to record from. I need to do... Did you reserve the lavatory or not? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sat on a toilet now with like a laptop? I think he's gone. Uh, he's ladies gone. and gentlemen, welcome to Podtoid. That's what I need to do. I was trying to get the introduction nailed down pat because we got announcements. Oh, sure, sure, sure. We've got Jonathan Holmes, as usual. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. I'm We've here. got Max Scoville, who you've heard. He is now a toilet man. <laughs> and we're joined by little, a little brown boy. <laughs> <laughs> who I found on the street, and I pressed the shiny penny into his hand. It is Sumit Sarkar, sports editor for Destructoid.com. Yes, back by popular demand. I don't know what the, the there's a recent been a recent spate of people tweeting at me saying we want you back on Podtoid, and I'm not quite sure why. I don't know. It's probably because I've been bullying Jonathan Holmes too much, and they need they need some <laughs> classic coke now. Uh, I see. <laughs> Uh, I don't. Yeah, bully, don't I don't to... actually bully Jonathan Holmes. It's it's a kind of love thing. Mm, um, yeah. Whereas with yeah. Spitzer Car, it was always pure hate. <laughs> so I oh, think yeah. that's. I think they want the genuine sort of dis- disgust, really, that I have for Submit. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking, of course. Uh, but Submit has been doing like video game stuff. 
and he can I have talk about that, which would be a nice treat for the Podsoid <laughs> listeners to talk about video games for a bit. Uh, I have been doing stuff. Uh, I've just been playing Twisted Metal, um, and I can't play the online at the moment because Sony, lol. Um, and I've been playing the campaign, which has ruined my week. I can't really oh. say much more than that because of embargo and stuff, but the campaign ruined my week. Thank you, you very must- much. It could be because you liked it so much that you just haven't had any time for anything else. It could be, it could be that I love people putting races in a combat car game and the, the physics of a combat car game and the environments built around a combat car game are perfectly suited to races where the AI will lose the match just to run you off the road. They don't care losing so long as they run you off the road. They don't run anyone else off the road, just you. And huh. maybe I love that. Maybe I love that and Twisted Metal ruined my week because I now will not enjoy any other game where that doesn't fucking happen. So wow. maybe that's what happened. Um, I played on PlayStation Vita. I went to an event. That'll work. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. played that. Uh, Submit has had a fiddle with it. He went to an event. So, what yeah, event I've, did you go to, Submit? Well, I, I've had multiple fiddles with it. I'm, I'm always fiddling with oh, electronics. No. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I, I had hands... I didn't go to E3 last year, but I did have hands-on for the first time at a, a Sony thing in July that was in New York, and then again at another Sony thing that was in uh, December and other things, events of that kind where they show video games to the people who write about them, like me. This isn't the Vita Hill uh, social club, is it? No, they, they did have one of those in New York, but I, I decided not to go to that because that was open to the public, and, well, I, I don't engage with those people. <laughs> um, oh, some bit. Especially but, in New York. Yeah, the dirty. I've never, I've never been into New York. I just decided to. I mean, I everything I know about New York, I know from Gremlins to the new batch. So I'm assuming it is Gremlins. <laughs> yeah, it is like that. It's Gremlins you and seen, Phoebe uh, Cates. Have you seen uh, Home Alone Two: Lost in New York? Oh, I have. So yeah. it's okay. It's like so it's Gremlins and Phoebe Cates and Tim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> You would think that Tim Curry is the star of that movie, and he kind of takes it he away, is. doesn't he? Max, it, are you back? Because he's I think British. So. I think so. Does it sound like I'm still in a fucking toilet? Um, it sounds like you're near so a toilet. Bad. You're not so bad. Okay. I wish you're I was not... near a toilet so I could throw up because I'm so angry. I want to vomit at the fucking Skype. It sucks. <laughs> Maybe um, I was, I was going to say, I had, I've been sitting here like whispering at my computer for moments. Just... You know, trying to trying to get your attention, but apparently I had things set up wrong. You mean on um on while recording Pod Toid, you've been had it set yeah, up? Yeah, I've been sitting here, but I've been like, hello, hello, yep, and I've got this stupid one of those dumbass. It's like wrap around headphones, but with a microphone on it, so it looks like I'm a cool ass rollerblader, except I'm taking a fucking business call, and the microphone doesn't even work on the headphones. It's so stupid. Oh, so stupid. yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hopefully it'll get better. I played the Vita. We oh, you played, played the Vita, Vita too. We've all played the Vita. I think we yeah. all have. Yeah, I actually, to tell the truth, I borrowed a Japanese one uh, to have from a fiddle who? with. Ah, huh? a friend who from who you do that from, from Japan a, from associates <laughs> from <sighs> from my people, my connections, my Al Qaeda connections. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've cool. been, and that's good because I really wanted to try it, but I haven't been. Like, every time I tried to get to one, something happened and I couldn't. I've been at events where it's there, but you know, various things stop me from being able to play with it. So I'm, I'm glad to have had a go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I it was fun. It, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the hardware. Nothing right about it either for me. It's just it's good hardware. Games are all right so far. Eh. Submit your thoughts. Uh, well, um, it depends. You know, uh, that depends on the the difference of the games. There's different games for it. They're going to have 26 True. games at launch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Different game. Uh, you you can say that. We're not bound by embargo. There are multiple <laughs> games with yes. PS Vita. Okay. Yeah. You you have a breaking... about it, I I don't know if people are aware, but you know that there's more than 
There's more than one. Fucking hell. Carry on like this and you'll have Patrick Klepex clown. You'll be the giant bomb news journalist <laughs> breaking yes. them stories. Tw- uh, yeah. Well, it- well, it used to be yeah. 25, but it's now 26 because they they just announced that uh, announced that Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus is a launch title as well. Oh, uh, I hadn't heard that. And I had some hands-on time with that yesterday at a uh, Tecmo Koei uh, thing at a hotel in New York. Um, so so Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus is it's a video game. It's it's a port, as far as I can tell, of Ninja Gaiden Sigma. From mm, mm. that, that was on the PlayStation Three That's a few right. years ago. Uh, so, Ninja Gaiden Sigma, of course, was a port of uh, Ninja Gaiden from the original Xbox. So you're playing right. a port of a port, except it's on a in your hands instead of on a screen, a big screen. Um, That's right. But, yeah. yeah, you know, that's I, done. That that is done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I so so mm-hmm. it doesn't it looks better than an Xbox game, that's for sure. Uh I you know I played okay. about the, the first level which I remember playing uh, in the demo. It's it's called The Way of the Ninja, the first chapter which was the demo of Ninja Gaiden Sigma. I you know, it's a Ninja Gaiden game. You you're a ninja, you you slice dudes. Um did it, it feel looks- any different in any way other than the visuals? Because that's what I would want to know. No, no, yes. that's the thing. It it felt you know just as a uh, responsive and, and fast and fluid as Ninja Gaiden always has felt. You know, it's um, the graphics. Like it, I don't since it's you know it's a port of a port. I don't feel like it looks as necessarily as good as some other Vita games that I've seen. But uh, it looks. It does look. It's not. It doesn't look bad. It looks fine for a PlayStation right. Vita game. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I also saw another. Vita game that, that Jim might be more interested in than Ninja Gaiden. The game's called Dynasty Warriors Next. Oh, yeah. it's the next one. Yes, the next Jim, one. Jim, how excited they, are they you, just, Jim? They've just given up on numbers and they're just putting next. Oh, yeah, it's just the next one, yeah. <laughs> just Dynasty Warriors, <laughs> another one. <laughs> you know, uh, Dynasty yeah. Warriors again. Yeah. I'm actually, I've, I've got it here. Oh, oh well, so you're not that excited. It's, you I just can't, have it. I can't talk about it. Yes, but I, I can, really? because, because I, I can talk about what I saw, at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, Jim is reviewing it, as from what I understand. Oh, and... yes. Who the fuck else? Conrad! <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's true. But yeah, look at that review that. around launch. But th- that will also be a launch title for the Vita. Um, and I haven't played a Dynasty Warriors game since 6, I want to say, on uh, PS3. And um, there's this really cool new thing that they, that they they actually changed up the combat. So you're not just mashing square and triangle anymore. You're now mashing the right trigger as well. Groundbreaking, I know. You, oh, well, no, I thought those games had uh, combos. They put yeah, a load of touch. On. There is combos in it. There's, he's, there's talking, combos? he's talking out of his ass. Uh, there's oh. <laughs> Um, okay. because it's not just a button masher. No, I know, I know. You, yes, there's, there's they're touch a touch stuff. screen, so it's also a screen masher now. Yes. Punch well, so, the beta screen and crack it and break well, it. So, so here's the thing. So there's, what, what I mean with the right trigger is that, uh, you know, before you, you would have a square and triangle for light and heavy attack respectively, and you can, you know, chain combos together in different ways using those, uh, uh buttons in different combinations. But now there's, uh... The, the right trigger makes it easier for you to chain combos because what it'll do, uh, at least with the character I was playing, um, I don't know if it's different for other characters, but uh, you know, you'll know you be in a combo with square and triangle, and you can and it, let's say you run out of dudes to kill in your immediate area, you can hit the right trigger and he'll sort of do a dash forward, and that or you know you can direct it in any direction, and that will con- you know continue your combo temporarily, and then hopefully you will dash into another group of minions. Uh, or of, of peasants that you can slash. Um, so that's huh. neat. And so I managed to get like a 500 something combo while fighting, you know, the the final general of the of, of a particular map. Not bad for uh, a beginner. No, no. 500 combos. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Did it? Did you feel like you accomplished something, or did you feel like anybody could have done it? Uh. I wouldn't call myself skilled at Dynasty Warriors, so, you know, as Jim was saying, 500's, you know, not terrible, but, you know, Jim's 
Jin doesn't get out of bed for anything behind, uh, except for 1500, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it, but I guess my general question is about Dynasty Warriors. Is it a series where, what's that? Max, are you, where are you, Max? Are you here? I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> Yeah, and I keep hearing strange slurpy background noises, like you're yeah, in, yeah, yeah, like you're in the belly of a whale. I wish I don't. I don't know what's going on. Do I? Am I like hearable? I mean, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. What about it's now? Is that better? Not really. Uh, it's about Is this the same. better? Yeah. You're kind of sounding like Bane does in the Dark Knight Rises <laughs> trailer. Oh, Christ. I feel okay. like I'm at, okay. I feel like you I'm, are. I... Mm-hmm. Max, will you allow me to die when Gotham is ashes or not? <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a good movie. Oh, uh, I was fan gonna... of, of the Dark Knight Rises when you understand what they're saying. It's gonna be like a nerd thing. It's like, yeah, I can hear what both of them are saying. I can hear what Batman's saying through his growling, and I can hear what Bane's saying yeah. through his. British man. I heard a conversation instead of two Rottweilers having sex. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, speaking of which, um, mm. I, I, I'm going to stop bringing it up because it is shameful and someone on um, iTunes complained about, and I quote, that pig Sterling begging for free stuff. Which isn't true. I haven't begged. I just said if someone wants to, they can. But I, just for the last time, someone got me a succubus from Castlevania, which was very nice of them. And someone else got me. What? Um, Why do they? Wait, uh, tell me more. It was There's just an a action succubus? figure of a succubus from Castlevania. Is it from Japan? Or? You can see her ass. That's why I got it. You can, you can masturbate too, right? Yeah, that's why I got what? it, obviously. I put it out my bum. What country is it uh, it's from? This country. Oh, it's an American one? The NECA, the NECA, the NECA one, yeah. NECA, yeah. Um, but oh, someone I'll else got that. me, right. and I. this is actually I... game-related, the Scarecrow from Arkham Asylum. Um, the Scarecrow and Mrs. King? The, D, the DC Direct um, action figure of Scarecrow. Uh, oh, and it's not possibly King. my favourite thing, like my favourite action figure I've ever had. It is incredibly badass. Um, so yeah, I mean that w- I would recommend if you're like if you like Arkham Asylum, you like toys, get them because they're really well made and just look fucking awesome. So I actually, as a joke, made an Amazon wish list as well. Yeah, and it was full of things that I would never probably buy for myself, and people sent them to me, um, <laughs> and they were like dumber things than you put on yours, Jim. And I blame you for this. I blame you. Hey, I didn't put them. I I use my wish list like also as like a reminder of stuff to get. Like it's a genuine thing. You're the one who put down what was it? Fucking Turkish spiked war helmets and things. Yeah, <laughs> and like six different werewolf masks. <laughs> um, I got. Let me let me like list off some of the things. That, and I, I I thank everybody for for sending these to me. But I blame you, Jim, because these people should not have spent money on my dumbness. I will take that. I'll shoulder that burden like Christ. I, I got a grappling hook. Whoa. Four, <laughs> no, I think eight dozen glow-in-the-dark bouncy balls. Oh, God. Um, I got... Eight dozen? That's like a hundred. Eight, eight dozen. It's Okay. A, yeah, it's a lot. Right. A, lot a lot of fucking yeah. bouncy balls. Um... Uh, let's see, a Deadpool action figure, a Deadpool comic, um, a small plastic Wolverine, a copy of Space Jam on Blu-ray. Um, <laughs> Blu-ray? That's expensive. Yeah, That's it's like Space Jam on Blu-ray. I watched it last night, and guess what? Space Jam on Blu-ray? Still a really fucking stupid movie. <laughs> I mean, it's brilliantly stupid. It looks it looks very crisp, but it's still fucking stupid. Does, does, does the CG yeah. look bad? Or not CG, but, you know, the compositing of the that whole movie i'm like it's like somebody made like a weird youtube poop like a big budget <laughs> youtube poop movie based on twitter trending topics from 1995 i mean it's it very- is it is stupid and i i, I know I, I also really enjoy it um like yourself but i i agree it's stupid so, so many people take that seriously though that film yeah i'm i'm sure really really people yeah. love that really? film like they adore like destructoid there's a 
among the community there is a like a loyal, almost religious following of Space Jam. Everyone got mad at me for making fun of it. I saw that last, like, was that last night you were, or earlier this today, this morning, having yeah. to justify saying that Space Jam is stupid, like you were Michael Richards on stage or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like the Bill Murray parts, but it's a, a generally tough-to-watch movie, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it's, uh, really it's, it's really embarrassing. It's really embarrassing, because it's got this, like, this very flashy kind of jock jams intro where they're just flashing everyone's name up on screen and you're like, yeah, Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Main night. Okay. And then it's like the writers and like the editor, the editor is like, like, oh, what the fuck was it? It's like Lester Kahn or something. Sheldon Kahn, okay. Sheldon, Sheldon Kahn, ACE. And it's all like flashing his name and it's got like Michael Jordan jumping up in the background. And I'm just like, Nobody, this is a children's movie. No one is sitting there, like, screaming, yeah, Sheldon Kahn edited this movie. Like, cut to the part where Looney Tunes play basketball. Yeah. That's what we want to watch the movie I for. will say one thing for Space Jam, though, because I think it was an amazing achievement to get, like, all those different vivid paint jobs over Willem Dafoe's uh, face while he was playing all the monster ones. <laughs> Oh, no. that, that would be beautiful. Why don't we do that? Why don't we well, do that? That would be beautiful. That is what it was. They weren't cartoons. It was just good paint. So <laughs> another thing that someone got me, um, this yeah. is like, I'm, I'm like, this is what made me just destroy my wish list because this is too much. This guy named <laughs> Jay Solomon, who's apparently a big fan of our show, sent me a fucking, this 20th anniversary Optimus Prime that's like, it's like 14 inches tall, and it transforms from Optimus Prime into a truck, as you'd expect. And the, you open up this chest, and the Matrix is in there, and you push a button, and it lights up. And oh, you can push a yeah. button back of his head, and his mouthpiece moves up and down. And he comes with a transforming Megatron gun. And yeah, I've seen that. That's really good. It's, it's like... It's the most generous fucking thing anyone's done for me in a very long time. And I'm, like, ashamed of myself for putting it on my horror Christmas list. <laughs> So, Jim, that's your fault, and, oh, yeah, yeah. and you owe that man an autograph. Yes, I got a message from him on Facebook. That is a thing I'll be doing. Um, he would fucking Almost... live in Canada. Expensive mail, <laughs> cunt. Ugh, but... <laughs> dude, two stamps. <laughs> Damn right. No, but I will... No, I, he wanted an autograph, and I will... In, in exchange for something he got for you. So, I will... It is my fault, though, so I will gladly well, do that. Well, clearly, um, I mean, Max, Max Goebbels' autograph is worth nothing, so... I, 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 I bought him a present. A Mitsar car. It is, he <laughs> su- Max signs that check on the fucking child support payments he has to do every month, and it is worth five hundred pounds. <laughs> my that, that child weighs five hundred pounds. It's not my fault. It, <laughs> That's my child? fault again. I was no. It's the pro- it. What happened was this kid, this fat kid, <laughs> it got stuck in a in a. On a, on a um, what do you call it? A scaffold. This child, this very is is like Tyler or something. This fat boy climbed up on this scaffold, and he got he kept eating up there. And he's up on this fucking scaffold. And the scaffold, I adopted. It was one of those things where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna send a check to to like you know to chip in for this this poor child. And at the time he was a normal child. He didn't you know climb on scaffolding, but he climbed up on a scaffold and just kept eating. And the scaffold is getting more and more unstable. So I have to send money for construction people to come in and and bolster the scaffolding with like rebar and and zip ties and put in PVC pipes and stuff just to make sure that that child can literally be supported while he's up on the scaffold eating. Yeah. And I'm making it worse because I'm I'm underneath, like tossing frozen pizzas up there like frisbees. Yeah, fucking Jim <laughs> decided that while I was trying to support this child physically, he would just mail food to this boy. Uh, yeah, I would just make him. I wanted to see how fat you can get on a scaffolding, and I, I'm I'm too fat to climb. But he was still spry. His heart hasn't given out yet. So I'm just I'm just tossing frisbees up there. I've got like a a nerf gun and I'm just like nerfing Hershey's drops up there for him. I'm just like, eat, just, eat fat boy. You've got nothing else to do. You've got a nerf gun full of taquitos and you're just shooting them into his mouth. They're directly in. It's a beautiful thing to see. Like his mouth's open and it's just like an arc of taquitos going into a fat boy's mouth. It's a, 
It's a beautiful sight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm covered in cats, and it's very hard to stay awake. You're covered in cats. <laughs> yeah, there's just all these cats on top of me, and it's so relaxing. Jesus, it's really... You guys are being as entertaining as always, but I'm just like, oh, so furry and quiet, and just a soft purring, and oh, good night. Is this a condition? You know that... Like, you're, you're covered in cats, like, like <laughs> No, it's not like... No, they're real cats. They're just cats okay. all over me. That's actually... That actually sounds beautiful. It's to not just, bad. To just it's lie cold. back covered in... Then they're all just, like, crawling all it's... over you. It's fur-colepsy. It's fur, fur, <laughs> per or per colepsy, whichever. There's a uh, episode of Adventure Time where a tiger sleeps on top of the main characters like a blanket, and it looks really good. I'd like that tiger to blanket me. Where were we? What were we talking? We were talking about Dynasty Warriors. Uh, Dynasty Warriors, but... yeah. No, J- Jim's not wrong about Dynasty Warriors in that there's more than just the old stuff of hacking and slashing. Uh, there are, you know how you would have your, you'd hit circle for your Muso attack, which is your special. Um, so with that, you, you can, like, while you're doing it, you can, uh, shake the screen or like, it'll prompt you either to shake or swipe across the screen and that will, you know, prolong your attack or make it more powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's kind of, that's something. In fact, there's a special mode in the game called Gala Mode, which sort of has six mini games. Uh, I talked to the producer and, you know, a lot of the Vita launch titles, um, you know, purposely have uh, some modes in them that are designed with mini games that, that basically show off the different facets of the hardware, to, you know, so people can, uh, you know, familiarize themselves with what the Vita can do. Because mm-hmm. um, there's so much, so many different things packed into that. I mean, that's. But how much? Show. Yeah. I was just going to say the way they designed the Vita, it really looks like. Just a catch-all, like trying to do everything anyone's ever wanted from a mobile device. Sort of, you know, you got the touch screen, the cameras, the analog stick that everyone's wanted, traditional controls and iOS-style mobile controls. It's like they tried to do everything. Uh, whether that will lead to it being a kind of jack-of-all-trades, master of none, or whether it will do everything excellently, I think remains to be seen, because... The stuff I've played so far is interesting, but nothing like has made my jaw drop and made me say, "Wow, this is the killer of all mobile experiences." Yeah, it's it's interesting in that the they, they've from what I've played, they have, some developers have found some interesting ways to use the technology. Um, you know, uh, Escape Plan, which is a game I'm really looking forward mm. to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I played I that, that back in. Yeah, I played that back in December, and um, so that's a, a, a grayscale puzzle game. Uh, I, I wrote a preview of it. You can check it out, and, and Jim's written about it as well. Um, and uh, there, you, you control this character who like just sort of walks forward like a lemming, basically. It will just keep walking unless it encounters an obstacle. And um, so there's like, let's say there's a gap you have to cross, and you know it's just going to keep walking and fall into the gap unless you do something. And there are these three panels on the wall, and you'll see, if you touch the back touchpad, um, you can uh, pop the panels out from the wall, and they'll come forward into, you know, into space, and so then the uh, little dude in the game can walk across them. So that's that's really neat. There's a lot of stuff in that game that that shows some really neat interactions uh, with the rear touchpad and the front touchscreen. Yeah, that's actually, like, my most looked forward to, even above Dynasty Warriors Next, I've been looking forward to Escape Plan more than Anything else, possibly with the exception of Gravity Days, um, it just—it looks amazing. It looks just like the kind of game I really, really used to like, and I don't really play so much anymore. It's kind of got weird, adventurous, point-and-clicky types type of stuff to it. The Lemmings type stuff, and I love the design—the weird, yeah. inky, leathery design of the characters like those strange sheep things that i saw in the latest screens Mm -hmm. they've got like mouthless they look like mouthless noseless skulls crammed onto big leather bags that have been stuffed with lumps to make it look like a furry sheep and it's got a zipper on it where when did they get it shown i haven't seen those guys yet uh, that was in. I did a sc- uh, like a gallery of screenshots on Destructo. I think last week or the week before. Oh, I missed and, it. Yeah, strange leather sheep beasts. Yeah, and, and that is yeah. 
Yeah, they're in the screenshots that are in my preview, I think, as well. They are, they are sort of, uh, you can use them as guinea pigs in the game. So, you know, you tap on them, and they, they rush forward and then get electrocuted, and you're like, oh, well, now I know not to do that. Huh, <laughs> when's your preview going up? Is your preview up yet? Yeah, no, I, 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 I wrote it in December, so it's been up. December 2011? Yes. No, uh, 1874! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Max, did yeah. you say you... You played it as well, Max? Yeah, I played it um, at the Vita Social Club, one of the few times I've been there. Um, I really like it. That was one of the things I saw, like, pictures of that, and I was like, that looks cool. I probably want to play it, and I like it. It's a cute little game. It makes me think of sort of like if if Lemmings and Limbo and Tim Burton made a game together would kind of mm. be like that. Mm. It's very, yeah, it's very creepy sense. and neat. And I, I don't know. I get a kick out of it. Um, I'm really looking forward to mortal Kombat on the Vita. That looks fucking sweet. Well, it's just it's, mortal Kombat. It's no, Kombat. it's not. No. It's mortal. Jonathan Kombat. Holmes is such a ghost at the feast today. You really <laughs> are. It's all these bringing cats. us down. They're Talking so relaxing. Cat blanket. Oh, I just yeah, but snap. Promotion, you get to have a fucking blanket made out of cats because you're rich now. Oh, they're so soft. And that's it. I think a combination of the promotion and his decadent cat robes. Yeah. They've turned him into a right arrogant man. Jonathan Luxury Homes. Yeah. Luxury Assortment Homes. This cat is going right into my armpit right now. Oh, I'll tell you what, why don't you pop it? What are you doing, man? Why don't you have a cherry liqueur chocolate as well? While you do that, oh, I'm just sitting just back get a, You get a bunch of cherry cordials and you just suck out the liquid inside and throw away the chocolate part. That's Whoa. How rich you are. That is decadent. I, Lucius, I I've made a hat out of a live poodle and I'm going to eat <laughs> cherry liqueur chocolates that was bought for your anniversary, but I found them under your bed and I'm I'm going to eat them, Lucius. Oh, my God. Well, I purchased a cathedral, and I'm using it to store some of my old, old textbooks and photo albums. <laughs> those here, those here, those here, come over here. I've just bought the deeds to the moon. I'm, I'm turning it into a house. And I'm going to rent, not even going to live there. No, I'm going to rent it out to Bill Gates, who isn't as rich as I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, st- it started out being Voldemort, but then just became Plummy McRich, which is what you are, <laughs> Jonathan Holmes. You are, I'm Plummy, oh, oh, I'm Do you think- Plummy <laughs> McRich, the richest man in video games. Do you think cats are expensive and that? It- it just costs a lot to have cats. You have a whole blanket of them. I mean, you've got uh, they're, like they're not a blanket. They just cats decided. Over there. <laughs> I've sewn all these cats together like the human centipede, but cats and blankets. Mm. I'm that rich. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't cost a lot of money. To... I've bought, <laughs> I've bought an animation cell from the cartoon version of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I'm so rich. <laughs> this one's of Dr. Gang Green. <laughs> That's uh, the character played by um, Gomez Adams, right? Oh, I've I've met Gomez Adams because I'm so rich. <laughs> Is he dead or not? He's dead, Sean. He's dead. I bought so, his bones. I so the, Gomez's bones and Alvias. Sorry. The Mortal Kombat on the Vita. <laughs> Just talk about video. The games. one thing that yeah. pretty much sold me on it is there's a mode where there's a bunch of stupid little mini modes, like little mini challenges. And I don't even think I'm gonna play them when I get the game. I just these are the things that sell me on it. There's one where when you're getting punched, your blood flies all over the screen and you have to keep wiping it off. Whoa. And there's another where your head keeps getting bigger and you have to tap on your head while fighting someone. Is that fun? Tell me that's fun. I don't know if it is. I don't give a shit because it's funny. It's a yeah, funny that thing. Is. That it's one is of those funny. things where I'm like, hey, look at what I'm playing. And they're like playing, you know, they're, they're stupid. They're, they've got like a little cup and ball game in yeah. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Well, it's Jonathan like, Holmes you know, is riding around on gold-plated rollerblades. Yeah. 
Because I'm rich, that's why yeah, I don't you're like rich. You're Mortal Kombat. Riding around in the park on gold plated rollerblades, juggling canapes. <laughs> oh, I'm, I I'm so rich that I I don't buy toys and games. I buy canapes and play with those. <laughs> You're going to get me badly hurt because I'm laughing and the cats are getting really pissed. Well, um, how many, unlike how many cats, cats you can there? afford medical There's like seven they're cats. So they're rich. getting really, they're really getting, I'm going to try to mic this cat. Why do you have so many cats? Just one second, I'm going to mic the cat so you can hear how angry it is. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's, oh that's horrible. Yeah. That noise is Sorry. terrible. Holmes. Sorry, Holmes. I'll do that again. Holmes. Yeah. It's just this weird what? thing going on Why? right now. Holmes, shut up. Holmes. <laughs> All right. Why do you have seven cats? Every once in a while, it just comes together like Did your like wife that. turn into like five cats or something? <laughs> no, there's a, there's a visiting cat or two, and there's or a cat's, cat's friend is over. Well, I have two cats, a standard set of cats, and there's a, um, some cat-on-cat visitations and different... Um, Different arrangements. Are you running a feline brothel? <laughs> Are you a fucking cat pimp? Is that what you've been promoted to? The cat pimp of Baltimore? <laughs> the cat's getting so mad for, for me and me for laughing at that. It's a male cat. He's the one who's attacked uh, Samit Sarkar a few times. You remember uh, him, right, Samit? Yeah, uh, he's really pissed off right now because I'm laughing. <laughs> because you're, I, Samit, you're demanding payment before he goes up to meet Shaniqua the cat prostitute. You are a dirty cat pimp. So Matt will tell you about the cat. Would you consider him, uh, you know, someone who would be nice for money? He's not too nice to submit, I don't think. No, but I think he'll be nice to... to submit, did you try and get, like, a handful without paying? Is that the problem? <laughs> I, think, I think he's nice as long as you're not brown. <laughs> He's racist. It's a racist, racist cat. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little brown. I'm sometimes brown. I think that confuses the cat. It doesn't know what one you are. Ah, the old mud race routine. It's yeah. like he he gets he momentarily confused. Ron Paul though, he don't like your lot. Ron Paul doesn't like cat friends. He doesn't like brown people. That's my new thing. I've discovered. This is my new game. Right? Fuck <laughs> video games. This is this is a great video game. Right? You log on to Facebook. Right? And just write on your, like, wall status update, just write Ron Paul. And that's okay. it. And then just watch you get a hundred comments of people <laughs> arguing over whether or not he is racist. It's well, what brilliant. Did he, did, what's it specifically, why do people... Um, that? He's been... Ron Paul has been, like, going to Republican debates in blackface and saying, <laughs> See you, Jimmy, where I'm that warty melon. Uh, no, instead of doing his speeches. He did. He, that's what he did. No. I know, I'm, I'm fucking about. Actually, he was at a comedy club and was being heckled uh, by some black kids, and he said, I'm glad at them. And then Jerry Seinfeld asked him to apologize. Mm. <laughs> that didn't happen either. Why, why do people hey, look, think he's... Jonathan Holmes, I've got a new, yes. a new section, a new weekly feature, right? Called Ron Paul Satire Jokes. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there, Jim? Ron Paul the Racist. That's Ron a good Paul one. Yep, just, yep. Um, no, that's yep. it. Here's a good that's one. A Here's a good joke, right? How many uh -huh. Ron Pauls are, does it take to be racist? I don't know. Tell me how. <laughs> just one Ron Paul the racist. Uh, not, not, and I've done that one. Uh, how many Ron Pauls does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. How many Ron Pauls does it take to change a light bulb? Ron Paul is racist. <laughs> So tune in next week for another round of Ron Paul's satire <laughs> jokes. Is he homophobic too, or just racist? Uh, he was on that Bruno film with Sacha Baron Cohen, and Sacha Baron Cohen like tried to come on to him, and then he was filmed in the hotel lobby later complaining about, quote, that fucking queer or something. Oh, okay. So, so might throw that on the pile of things he definitely is. So he's a homophobic racist. Um... I don't care whether he is or not. It's just funny to say and watch people like, because people love him. Like people on the internet are in love with him and oh, yeah. letting me know that and letting me know that I can like Photoshop his head over Red Norton's from American history X like <laughs> I did this morning. And what? And it will upset what? people. What? So what when are you confused about here? 
When did you do that? How did I, did I miss that? that? This it was really good. It was one of the best pictures I ever did. I did one picture of him wearing blackface, and I did one picture of him as Ed Norton after he did a curb stomping in American History X. And to let me know that I can do that and people will like get into really upset like slanging matches with each other. It's basically like telling a pyromaniac that he's moved in next door to a matchstick factory. It's fucking brilliant. I urge everyone to do it. Some people just want to see Facebook burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, um, dear, it was a ruby the size of a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Michael Caine? Who no. is that? That was great. No. That was that soccer player guy? The one who uh, grabs the balls? No, Not the players, soccer balls. Soccer no. players no. can't touch the balls with their hand. No. No. Yeah, he, t- he did. He touched the genitals with his they hand. They have to use their mouths. <laughs> I would uh, love that. I would love a mouth bowl where, like, the players have to crawl around on all fours, just like bashing the bowl with their mouths. That yeah, would go, that's a, that would go on forever. It's a kinky party game that uh, uh, attention-seeking young women sometimes engage in. Hey, you don't say that. It. Well, it's something. What parties something have you been going to? Sexy they, rich people parties where they cover you in cats and then oh, have well, women put their balls in your mouth. That's exactly the kind of party he's been going to. Oh, welcome to my peacock party where we're going to put peacock feathers up our asses and pretend to be peacocks while sucking each other's dicks. That's the kind of decadent <laughs> aristocrat party you go to. Oh, stab me in the balls with a golden letter opener. That's what they do. <laughs> I was enjoying the silence. You are, a, you are a disgusted, inbred nobleman. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disgusting. I am disgusted. That's it. Yes, at yourself for being so rich, right? And you are German and still think you've got a right to sit on the throne of England. <laughs> Calling yourself Windsor when everyone knows your real name is Verdenheim. That's German. Probably. It's got a V in it. <laughs> yeah, and Heim. Yeah. Heim! That proves it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we finished talking about the Vita, did we? Did we? Yes. I, I, I've decided Morrison. that I really want one. Like, and I'm, I'm going to get one. It's kind of exciting oh. because I don't... Like, I know that there's that whole thing where you're like, yeah, I'm going to wait on, like, you know... Uh, you know, launch day hardware. I don't give a shit. Like I bought a place, I bought a PSP off. I love, I fucking love the PSP. Like, I think it's the, I don't give a shit if it had like a crappy library or bad online support or whatever the fuck it was, or it was made noises or it didn't fit entirely in your ass. Like, I don't care about its flaws. It was cool. It did fit entirely mm. in my ass though. You have a huge ass. Well, I've got a <laughs> large. What? It's a normal size hole. I'm talking about the regular. I mean, not PSP. now, but you—you you were talking about the PSP Go. I'm talking about the original PSP. Mm. So was I. What's the, the difference? The, the PSP 1000, right up there. I think I still. And have I, one. I yeah. got a picture of John of the Pope's on the screen when I put it up there. I, I just feel like you know, even if they don't. Uh, put out a hardware revision anytime soon. I just feel like they're going to drop the price $50 by the time Christmas rolls around. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm writing it off on my taxes. It's for work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> sure, but, sure. But it's but, the thing is, I had I had a PSP for about, I think it was about three weeks. I bought one, like, when they had when they had reached that point where it was, like, it was affordable. I bought one from eBay, and it was, like, you know, I paid, like, 190 bucks and it was a PSP and like five games and the guy accidentally left like a two gig memory stick in it and I was just like fuck yeah I scored and then I I like something happened with my bank and I got super overdrawn and I was basically like I can't pay rent unless I sell this so I had to sell it oh no really yeah I had to sell it to my friend and I know he he basically was like he basically was just buying it because he knew I needed the money, and then he, I think he took it home and put it somewhere and just didn't do anything with it, and I was like, I love that thing. So I'm getting a fucking PlayStation Vita, yeah. and I'm just... fucking putting porno on it, and I'm going to play all these <laughs> PSP games. 
Yeah. I just want You're... Jonathan Holmes to think about what people like yourself have had to have done in the past while he's just been sort of being yeah. rich and getting richer. Because... <laughs> Just needs another few million by firing half his workforce. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm really not. I'm I'm fairly well off. You're incredibly I'm, wealthy. You're independently I'm, wealthy. We we all know about this. I work a lot. I've got you know, fifty hours at the Dude, day job. Dude, you're Jonathan and... Holmes the third. <laughs> no, not. Yes, you are. Your your father, Jonathan Holmes the second, was the viceroy of <laughs> something, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> like Pakistan or something? Yeah, I, I, to be honest, my words were coming out faster than my brain was working on that one. <laughs> you have the ability to do that. Not everyone does. I'm going to try to get this That's category That's not an ability you. to talk faster than you can think. It is. I wish I could thing. do that. All right, let's just one second. Give me a second. I'm trying to get, it, get this cat to uh, get audible for you. One second. That's what we're doing on Podtoid now, listening to cats. This is ridiculous. Is it though? Well, not yeah. by our standards. Oh, it sounded like, that sounded like a little fart. Did you just be, have just you actually got cats, or are you trying to contrive situations where you can put your ring? <laughs> <in>? like... <laughs> no, it's true. Just one second, one second. Yeah, doing, he's doing little wet farts. That's not a cat. Oh, you didn't hear this... it? Yes, no, we can hear it. It just sounds ridiculous. That's not radio. What does it sound like? <laughs> that wasn't good radio. I didn't hear anything. That's not quality radio. Oh. Oh, I'm... Let's I'm sorry, we need to turn this idea, podcast man. we need to turn this podcast around. Okay? Now I've used okay, up all my A material. Again. I've used up all the Ron Paul jokes, so we're up shit creek. Oh uh, well I I can talk about more games that I saw this week. Oh god, video games, I'm, what? I'll play uh... the what are you new here? Stop Good it. God. Stop ruining Pod Toid. <laughs> hey, Samir, do you remember when Reverend Anthony used to host Pod Toid? Vaguely. Yeah, do you remember when we used to talk about video games and have a point? No. No. Uh, <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah, you guys were pretty focused. Jim was the wild card. I mean, talking about, video, it's, it's, talking about video games, yes, but have yeah, a point. No. I, was, I was the wild card, which is like the kind of Murdoch character, the one who doesn't get a full episode all to himself. And right, then I had to host it, and now it is like Joey, like the sitcom spin-off from Friends that nobody liked. <laughs> That's not true. Our numbers are way up. The Murdoch spin-off is a huge hit. And it probably would have been in real life, too. I can't believe they thought that B.A. was really the star of the show. What I mean, is I wrong love, with you? I love Mr. T as much as the next guy, but the B.A. character did not have a lot of substance to it. He was afraid of flying. And... And they would have to drug him every time they wanted to. But put that's him on it. A plane. That, that was the entire. That was his you entire know what he character. did every every episode? He threw someone through a window. Yeah, that's he wouldn't let every people, episode. He wouldn't let people drive his van either. He liked to drive the van. He didn't even let people touch his van. Yeah, which was hard when they were trying to get in it. It's so funny. <laughs> and he was always sitting there. And if you watch him driving the van, he's just wiggling his arms back and forth. And it's like this: either the steering is really loose. Or they would just be going off the road. Yeah, and like no a- one was ever, no one was ever just like, "Hey, Mr. T, <laughs> you look really stupid when you're pretending to drive." Here's a fun fact, though, right? Because whenever anyone thinks of the A Team, um, after they think of the theme tune and the cigar and the, the bit in the credits with Hannibal wearing a dinosaur suit, they think about Mr. T, B. A. Baracus. And when mm. they think about Mr. T, B. A. Baracus, they yeah. imagine him going, "Oh." I ain't getting on no plane, fool, sucker, fool. Ain't nobody touching my van. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Started in the macho man at the end. <laughs> but that's how everyone remembers him, as some macho man sounding type guy. But yeah. then you watch the A-Team, and mm-hmm. he talks, and it's, I ain't getting on no plane. <laughs> no, it's it's got not. a weird high voice. He's got a weird, like, weird little girly voice. Get <laughs> Get off my plane! I do not remember. Don't, like nobody drives my plane! Get off my plane! <laughs> um, that was exaggerated for comic effect. But his voice is like not the deep <laughs> rock that everyone thinks it is. When you listen to it, he sounds quite, quite mellow, actually. Probably because he can't act. Well, he wasn't an actor. He, no. was he killed a man. 
Did he really? Yeah, just to watch. I, I read his book. Oh, he, yeah? Some guys mugged his mom, and he basically talks about how he went and killed them. Yeah. Oh. Well, but he he's sort of like, he's like, so I went to his house with a gun, and I broke <laughs> in. Oh. And in I'm the not book. really going to finish the story. Like, it's, he pretty much just point, puts it in a corner, and he's like, you're you like, know wow. why? You know why he doesn't finish the story? Because when he fucking shot him, he turned around, looked down, it was fucking Tupac, and he thought, right, keep him quiet. There's, that's really weird. There's actually there's an old uh, an old web web cartoon where Mr. T uh, kills Tupac for eating his Cheetos, and there's this weird part where they're just like driving next to each other. And I don't know why I remember this is like something I saw in Newgrounds like 13 years ago. Whoa! And he's just like, uh, Tupac, uh, you been eating my Cheetos?" And Tupac's like, "No." And he's like, "Oh, you got orange fingers." And like Tupac holds up his fingers, and his fingers are orange. So it's weird that you'd say that, but someone else has made that joke. Someone else had the same thought. That is yeah. too. That that proves that it happened. I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. Two people say something happened. Years it from happened. now, years from now, they will look at this podcast. They will look at that cartoon and they'll say, "There's a connection here," and it will be the Mister T code. <laughs> and they'll find out that Mister T shot <laughs> Tupac. And for those who are a bit confused listening, that's Tupac Shakur. Shakur, like not, not any of the other ones, not only the other two packs that you know. Is it two pack or pock? I don't know. I, I don't care. I think it's a. I, think I don't. It's a punk. I don't listen to that sort of fucking music. It's pock. It's pock. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. Yes. Did you know Mr. T had his own reality show called "I Pity the Fool"? Oh my god! Oh my god! It's a fine show, and I suggest that you watch it tonight, Jim. I'm Sterling. not watching it. I'm not watching it. I, he I, only, people. I can only watch Storage Wars now. <laughs> I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly certain in a previous episode of Podtoid, I've talked about not liking Storage Wars very much. Between yeah. th- then and now, I've become obsessed with Storage Wars, and in particular Barry Weiss, the skeleton gloved oh, old no. man who brings strange fetish club members to the auctions just to get attention for his old man self. Oh, I'm not familiar with him. Does he have a little beard? Uh, no. Is he the one with the hair? He's the one with the glasses and the skelling- skellington gloves. He's an <laughs> old man of Jewish descent. Uh-huh. Barry Weiss. And every now and then, he takes the heat off you when it comes to wanting to do things on him. Whoa, really? Yeah. Oh boy. I think it was like, Barry Weiss, Barry Weiss, I want to cover you in rice. I know you are on Storage Wars, but let me be your filthy whore. Thank you. <laughs> you I was a little made poem. that up now. I actually, I know, I just made it up, though, like last week. It's a good song. <laughs> but I made that song. up on the spot, and then I'm doing it now, which I did off memory. So that is still impressive, Jonathan. Oh, boy. I'm very impressed. Yeah. You'll like Guys. Barry Weiss anyway. He's independently wealthy like you. Is he really? Why does he need storage then? Can't he just? He's rent? a collector of antiques, and he go he buys old storage lockers to find rare treasures inside. Oh, uh, like you do because you're rich enough to afford it. I need storage. To yeah, put... for all of your ostriches that you keep and race. <laughs> guys, guys, yes, Max. Uh huh. I have to go. What already? Uh... Yeah, I have to go. I have no, to go guys, record a the... video. Oh, about eggs, eggs. Oh. about eggs in video games. Not Fabergé eggs like what you collect and eat for your supper. Actually, though. earlier today we threw an ostrich egg out a window. It, what? It, it, I'm not making that up. We did that at the office. I, yeah, they just threw an ostrich egg out a window and it exploded on the sidewalk. They're not endangered yet, are they? Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, <laughs> that one was. <laughs> yeah. We're working on it. How, where'd you get the egg? What? I don't know. It was left over from Epic Meal Time. Oh, yeah, of course. So we were like, "Hey, I know what we'll do. We'll throw an ostrich egg out a window." So now you're doing a video about eggs in video games? Mm, no, we're just gonna do a video. But I, <laughs> that was the first word that came to mind, which is a That's terrible funny. habit of mine. When people are like, you know, they're like, I, "I'm like, I have to go," and they're like, "Why?" And I'm like, "I have to go buy a house." And they're like, <laughs> "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> That's just going to a house. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's okay. I'm sorry, I uh, have to go. I'm drunk. Really? No, I'm. I'm. I have to go to the bathroom. You know, like, 
Why did you say yeah, I don't? Real. I was just lying because it's faster than whatever the <laughs> facts are. True. You're trying to solve the problem. But remember, they got Basil Fawlty in trouble in Fawlty Towers every episode, so oh, be careful, or you'll have to hit Manuel. <laughs> are you guys going to be in L.A. tomorrow? No. Oh, I was just Me? asking. Yeah, I was hoping. Maybe you just I'm, beat... No, I have to buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. I'm going to be in space. I actually have to rent a car. What kind of car should oh, I rent? Oh, rent a car. Get away from yourself. You, rent I'll rent it. You buy them. Like, whenever you need to rent one, you buy them. Use it for whatever you're going to use it for. Then just crash it into the river because you're rich enough to do it. Okay. Holmes, like Belton Louise. Yeah? Holmes, why don't you just buy a car and then throw it away when you're done with it? That's what he does. In the car rich car. asshole. He uses rich. cars like condoms. Literally. Why don't you just buy two ostriches and tape them together? <laughs> Why would I do that? What was that? <laughs> I don't know. All I feel right. really weird. All these cats are on me, and you guys are making me laugh. Mm. Goodbye, guys. You're leaving, Max. Bye, Max. I guess I want to... Bye, Max. Bye, Max. I miss you. Yeah, I'm going to LA tomorrow. Right. I call shenanigans. No, because... I'm really going. No, not you. Shut up. I. Oh. You're not going to LA. You're going to. I am. You're going to India for a knighthood from the Taj Mahal. <laughs> Which is no, a I building wish. and therefore incapable of handing out anything. But people were saying that Max Goville had to leave. The sh- he started leaving the shows early because of is it paedophilia or not? Right. Which sum- submit that's a hilarious video game based feature we were doing for a while. Um, gotcha. But the thing is, is Max has been having to leave because of his job. Mm. Like he can only really commit to an hour. Uh, so he wasn't leaving because I was making him uncomfortable by, you know, allowing Jonathan Holmes to talk about paedophilia every week, like what Jonathan Holmes does. Definitely him doing it, and it isn't me. <laughs> so there, you can shove that up your fucking ass. And another thing is, I have had so many emails. I've had one email from someone saying that is it paedophilia or not? It should come back. And it was the best bit of the show, and about three people on Twitter said it as well, which proves it. So, I have said I can't do it anymore because of the man, because of because of <laughs> Harry Shellman, the head of the RIAA, said I couldn't because I was infringing on his own paedophilia. <laughs> right? Oh. So, I can't do it anymore. And that is not my fault. If you want to complain about it, tell Max all the time. So, Max Goville? Yeah. No, yeah. no, Mighty Max. <laughs> With the red hat on? Yeah. His, his, his big friend? A lot and of people think that was pedophilia. What was your favorite Mighty Max toy? <laughs> oh, I didn't have any. I like the little owl guy. Oh, for fuck's sake, Jonathan. Samit, what was your favorite Mighty Max toy? <laughs> I did not have any. Oh, for either. fuck's sake, the pair of you. Okay, what do you want to talk about instead? I mean, I was going to have a nice conversation about Mighty Max, but. <laughs> well, I watched I... the show. It was a good show. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm I, sorry, um, no, I was gonna say I. So that was the the Tech McCoy thing that I was talking about was yesterday. Mm. Okay. Mm, but uh, I watched an episode of Mighty Max, right? <laughs> the cartoon where yeah. a, a scientist evolved himself, right, so much that he was just a big ball of thought, right? Wow. And was floating about, right, and could do like I guess telekinesis and and stuff. That's not how evolution works. Uh, you don't just get better until you are thoughts. <laughs> and I believe no, that no. for a while. And I think most people who sort of disagree with the theory think that's how it works. So Mighty Max has directly contributed to Sarah Palin and Michelle Buckman being stupid. So thanks a lot, <laughs> Mighty Max. Just those two. Those. Oh, wait, because they don't believe in evolution, do they? Or no, do they? no. They no, think the no. Earth is literally 6,000 years old. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it is. They're just in that little world. Why you know? we got? Why do we like rely on Richard Dawkins and the late Christopher Hitchens when we could just have you like stand up in a debate and go, "You think that? Oh, that's <laughs> awesome for you." And that would just shut them up. <laughs> like you would, you could undermine any argument, any political, religious, social argument, just by being you and just patronizing them into submission. That's your special I'm... skill. I guess. I just call it how I see it. I I do think it's cute, you know? Like seeing a little bear be like, oh, I found some honey. (laughs) 
<laughs> the world's been around for 6,000 years. You know, it's all... Give him a little pat and like... I didn't realize Winnie the Pooh was a creationist. <laughs> it probably is. It's a cute little thought, you know? It's a cute little bear. Oh, oh piggly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Canyon was created in the Great Flood, piggly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's baby thoughts. It's cute. They, they just let him talk. They, I they... want my honey, piggly. <laughs> You. He sounds oh, so sad now. God oh. hates fags, Pete. <laughs> so put your little dinkers away. Because I've got a good acre wood. Uh, that was a good one. That was that was a good episode of, of the adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that and should be a recurring uh, segment now. Oh yeah, I used to reenact for my friends Winnie the Pooh breaking into Piglet's bedroom at night and having his way with him. Um, that was just a fun game me and my friends would do. Would be what like, do you mean by reenact? Like, just uh, with, like, little toys or something? It would just, or did... No, it would just be like, oh, Piglet, I've come for you. <laughs> but he didn't actually go into a little pink person's room and start to... I need to... <laughs> I need to pop a hand in your honey pot. Oh. <laughs> That's not how Winnie the Pooh talks at all. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is like, oh, oh. you know. He's, uh... I know, but that, that was part of the fun of it. Was, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm involved with the fun of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, Bend I, uh... over and prepare for a different kind of poo up your ass. Uh, that was a good one. Oh, father. Poor Summit. <laughs> Summit was about to talk about technology. I, uh, Summit, so, Summit Saka. Summit. Yes, I'm here. Still. What have you been... Oh, shut up. What, <laughs> what have you been up to, right? Since we... Because I haven't spoken to you in 17 years. Oh, uh, back when the... No, me and him were there in Germany when the Berlin Wall came down. That was the last time I saw him. When we both had mallets and smashed, he was on the east, I was on the west. Smashed the wall, and then he gave me a bloody, and then we left. <laughs> you guys were like eight when that happened, right? You were just yeah. kids. It's cute. I sure. would have been three in 1989. Is that oh, pa- wow. Is that pedophilia or not? <laughs> a three-year-old sucks an eight-year-old's cock uh, on the <laughs> Berlin Wall. If it is at the Berlin Wall, which makes it, like, okay. Makes it historic. Yeah, it's definitely still historic. pedophilia, but is it, it is historic pedophilia. Uh, okay, that's all right. But because um, you've got a girlfriend now, have you still got a girlfriend? Yes. Oh, thank fuck for that. I is thought it the same oh, one. If or there was some had... bitter breakup that I'm just retreading on, that would have been awful. But he's still <laughs> it's awkward, isn't it? I still never managed know. to swindle a woman into bearing to be with him for more than three minutes. <laughs> yes, somehow. <laughs> I kid, I kid. I, I, I like you. Were right, Smith. <laughs> you know what? You, no. you're all right, kid. That's very nice of you to say to him. He yeah. is. He's a great guy. Yeah. So, how did you trick her anyway? <laughs> well, it turns out she she uh, used to listen to the old pod toy. That's right. She's a fan, isn't she? Well, she was. She was. She doesn't listen to the. I don't. Bl- I, I. I could say something annoying, like annoyed and disparaging, right now. But I literally don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> She's a fan of you, is what I'm saying. Submit, not of Podtoid. She's a submit fan. No, no. I. Th- I think she was a fan of Podtoid. But you were on Podtoid. Well, yeah, but. So where's my girlfriend then? <laughs> Why doesn't she all of our girlfriend? <laughs> You're married. You're happily married. Am I? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I'm in terrible trouble now. Yes. Um, but... Mm. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I yes! Back to Dynasty oh. Warriors. It's, yeah, it just oh. tells me how incredibly rude I've been. <laughs> that was tell us, about, tell us about was... your private life, Smith. <laughs> there was one last thing I wanted to say about Dynasty Warriors, which yeah. uh, okay. might be interesting to Jim. Um, Jim's got they, it, though. Right? Right, yeah, but, but I can't talk about it. But he doesn't oh, have. But, but he doesn't have, I don't know if he has people around him because for this, you know, they've got the usual story mode or whatever where you can play through and, and you know, it's just a, a sequence, a, a predetermined sequence of, of battles. But there's also this uh, this new conquest mode, and I don't know if they've had anything like this in uh, previous Dynasty Warriors games. But uh, the, while the rest of the game is single player, you can play this mode in um, 
uh, four-player ad hoc co-op. So it's not playable over Wi-Fi, but just you know, if you're all in the vicinity of each other, um, you can play co-op, which is uh, a mode where you start out and um, you can play. You you just sort of choose different battles that you want to. Uh, fight. It's like you're taking over t- China, you know, battle by battle. But you choose the order with your friends, and um, there's also like an economy system. So, uh, you know, some countries or, or you know regions will be worth more gold to you. Yeah. Which Basically, is all the that ones that Jonathan Holmes owns. Rich. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Richo, fucking one percent. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that, yeah. that seemed really cool. Um, I also saw like a, you know another game called Warriors Orochi Three, and I'm, I won't say anything about that except that it's uh it's interesting to me just that uh the game is coming out on 360 on a disc mm-hmm. and on PS3 on PlayStation Network. Huh. Um, yeah. and the reason for that, and it's going to be a full retail game on 360, uh, sixty dollars uh, from what they told me. But yeah. the thing is, the game uh, has um. Japanese voice acting and, and it's got you know subtitles for all the characters, but there's no English voice acting. And so the reason it's on PSN is that Sony has this restriction that I was previously unaware of, which is that uh, for, in order for a game to be released in North America on a disc, on a Blu-ray disc for PS3, it has to have English voices, which is why Warriors Orochi 3 can only be on PSN. Uh, How much does it cost on PSN? Sixty. They, they haven't determined that. They're still figuring out. I had yeah. no idea that they hadn't even localized it. Yeah, like, me neither. either. Um, it's, 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 it's due out in March, I think March 20th, uh, the same day that Ninja Gaiden uh, 3 is coming out. Um, but yeah, so I just thought that was a, little, a strange little tidbit. Uh, that, that is. That's a nice that's little tidbit. That's very weird. It's, Wouldn't yeah. they, couldn't they, they could just call anyone and be like, will you just do these voices well, this they've weekend? Well, got, they've got like a voice actors that, like, the same stock voice actors that they've used for the past ten years. Yeah. They've got these guys that, I mean, I, I recognize them. They're all, like, regular working voice actors. I'm surprised they didn't do it this time. I don't know whether it was time, because it usually takes a bit longer for a, I think, for a Dynasty Warriors sort of game to come out between its release in Japan and, and out here. That's sure. I didn't know that. That's new news to me, and I follow that shit, as you know, like, like Jonathan Holmes follows money, so it's yeah. I'm actually really surprised, and I'm a little, a little disappointed. I'm one of the few people that kind of don't mind the voice acting in Dynasty Warriors. I think it's it, it's decent, um, and there's a couple of voices that, that are really good, and just the fact that it's kind of like the Super Smash Brothers, but for Koei, which yeah. is the most ridiculous idea ever. And you know, it's got Ryu from. Uh, Ninja Gaiden and, and Ayumi or whatever her name is and Blade That's the Warriors Orochi. Yeah, on? yeah, yeah. And uh, guys yeah. from Blade... Achilles from the Troy game. Achilles from Troy. Uh, Joan of Arc from Blade Storm, which was a really nice little game that that nobody ever played ever. And oh, I've never heard of it. And it just looked like this ultimate sort of for someone like me who's who's been a long term Kobe fan for many years, like long before Destructoid even my my tenure there. Uh, it's yeah, it's a little shame that it won't be fully English voiced, um, mm. but then like, maybe the Japanese will make it more exciting with shouting. <laughs> well, I yeah, like I, shouting, but I worry about the game. That's just sending such a weird message to the consumer. Like it's not really a game that had to be sold at retail if we can sell it on PSN. So everyone who uh, would buy it on the 360 is going to feel like, well, I don't want to be an idiot and buy the $60 game that I could get for $20 on PSN, and then PSN people are going to not necessarily buy it because it's not in English. and they I don't, don't think it'll be... Tw- it'll be tw- yeah. I imagine it'll be, I would guess, like between 40 and $50. They, they, oh, okay. They, in that case. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I remember back in the day, uh, back in the day, you know, a few years ago when Warhawk came out, on uh, PS3, they they put out a box version with a disc, and it came with a Bluetooth headset. But it was a multiplayer only game, so they didn't charge full price. So the mm-hmm. box with the Bluetooth headset and the disc at retail was sixty dollars, but you could buy it for forty on PSN without right. the Bluetooth right. headset or the you know, disc. Yeah, that makes more sense. If it, if it's forty retail and forty PSN, I think it'll not confuse people too much. It'll just be a weird choice to have to make. Yeah, but um, 
But sure. also, uh, you know, other stuff I saw, people, the games might, people might be more interested in, uh, there was an EA event in New York on Wednesday uh, where they showed a, I played a, a mission from the Mass Effect 3 single player. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, that's a game that's coming out in like a month. Um, so, you know, I, I should say at the outset that I, I'm not really, I mean, I'm fami- familiar in a general sense of Mass Effect, but I've never played the games um I, I will eventually. They're on my list. I, I really want to, but I have to mm. find the time. Anyway, um, you know, uh, it was a, a standard mission. That, there, it was like this um, Martian dig that that uh, uh, Shepard and his crew had to go investigate because, like, they had lost contact with the people that were there or whatever. Um, and you know, so you get off, and there's this sandstorm that's coming, and um, you know, uh, you you realize that. Uh, the Cerberus people are on this planet, and they're like executing uh, the the, the um, humans that are there. And so then you you sort of the, the mission is is you sort of um, you know just just fighting through this uh, uh, sort of Martian uh, dig site with uh, you know versus the Cerberus, and um, you know there's other story stuff that I won't get into, uh, but you know it it seemed really cool. Uh, again, for me, like someone who's not familiar with the series, it's it was clear from the cutscenes that there's a lot of history between these characters. So that was really cool. Like um, Ashley is in was in happened to be in the party, and um, you encounter uh, Liara in the uh, you know during the mission, and so there's you know like again banter and sort of uncertainty between the characters. So so it really made me want to go back and and play the first two games. Um, mm. So that's exactly what they were hoping out of Mass Effect 3 is that, I mean, they know they have fans of Mass Effect 1 and 2 kind of sold already, but yeah. you're the, the consumer that they want to hook into it, and it sounds like with your time with it, you'd actually work to make you want to play Mass Effect 3 and the other ones too, so they're going to be happy to hear that, those yeah. guys, Bioware inter- guys. Yeah, an interesting thing is is that the the, the right, I, I talked to um, one of the producers, and, and what they actually want to... It's interesting the way they've designed this game because they what they told me is that you know Mass Effect 3 is definitely you know going to provide a great conclusion for the people who've been playing you know all along but they also want them they designed the story and the game so that people who've never played Mass Effect can pick this one up and sort of not be entirely lost or at least that they can still enjoy the game obviously you know if I just play 3 without playing the first two you know I I won't really know um uh I won't have the same background experience but they've designed it in such a way that that um first timers can can still in, in sure themselves. sure yeah that, they tried to do that with the uh what do you call them star wars movies and star trek i don't know if you've seen star trek 3 the search for spock you seen that no i've only seen the jj abrams movie oh really wow what an interesting life you've had picturing that <laughs> Starting with that movie, oh, the J.J. Abrams movie. I liked the part with um, Tyler Perry in it. That was good. Cause he's a judge. He's the the, uh, the black <laughs> judge. You saw that? It was just like watching Judge Mathis, except sure. it was Tyler Perry. And in the future, hey Jim, you yeah. still there? I hate hearing about Mass Effect. Gosh, <laughs> I, I, I feel really <laughs> sad when I hear about it. How come? I, you... don't, I just hate hearing the. Oh, I'm depressed now. <laughs> is it another one? Is this another one, uh, oil on water? How I can't love the games you love scenario? No, John? no, it's not. It's just I fucking hate Mass Effect. <laughs> okay. I hate Mass Effect as much as Jonathan Holmes loves firing his workforce for more money. <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, I just had to give a friend a long lecture. She thought she was going to get fired. Anyway, I don't like Mass Effect either. I don't hate it. I uh, can't feel uh, interested in it when I play it, and I just want to stop playing it. Watching other people play it is actually a little more entertaining because it's not any work, and it's fun to see how the story unfolds a little bit, but not enough. I'm not compelled. I feel like... um, I've said this to Jim before. Uh, I'm at a stage in life where I'm looking for new information and new uh, ways to 
go about getting emotions evoked in me in things. And if it's like stuff I've already... I've been offering got. to evoke new emotions in you <laughs> for the past few weeks, Jonathan Holmes. You have, and you have... See, Jim is a perfect example. He doesn't let Podtoid simply be the same old thing every week. Uh, every couple of months or so, you change it up. Now it's all about my anus and stuff. And it that's going to go on for a little while. That, that and then, one... You know, that one, like uh, like my semen to the roof of your mouth, is gonna stick. <laughs> wow. Well, I will I will spare you. Th- th- there's more Mass Effect talk, but I'll spare you guys. Oh, Mass Effect. Um, more they, like Asarek, to which I'll be gonna throw some sex, bum sex. Bum sex. <laughs> they um, Ass, like my, they're putting my out erect. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> no. They're jeez. <laughs> My ass is erect. How does the ass get erect? It's could just be like a donkey. Sticks. We could be talking about a big horny donkey, which is oh, I am. Sh- I'm very much a sexual donkey, and you are my little bum carrot. Oh boy. Uh, there. I'll just quickly say they're putting out a couple of companion uh, experiences along uh, on on. Yeah, I'm uh, putting out a companion experience as well. <laughs> yeah, on uh, on mobile platforms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so my my bainy chumessen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a uh, quivering uh, Mass- mm. There's a Mass Effect uh, this thing called the Datapad, which is an iPad app. I, I think it's uh, iOS. Yeah. I can't yeah. make data. I can't make Datapad sound like gay sex. Move on quickly. Move on quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's just a, a an iOS app that's uh, you know it includes the codex that'll give you this sort of the history of the series. So that's probably a good idea to have along with you, especially if you've never played Mass Effect one or two. You know, it'll tell you all about. In fact, you can go through the through the codex in this datapad app and see how things would have played out differently if you chose, uh, you know, Paragon versus Renegade at a particular uh, important decision in, you know, any, either of the first two games. Um, and there's also Mass Effect Infiltrator, which is a, uh, uh, you know, also on i um, iPad. I think it'll be coming to Android eventually. It's a, a third-person uh, cover-based shooter. Um, with uh, you know touch controls, it's developed by Iron Monkey, the same guys who did the uh, Dead Space iOS oh, game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, they, that that was a really good iOS mm-hmm. game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this one, it's it's similar. You know, it looks it's pretty simplistic. You know, uh, you um, there's a uh, virtual controls, but it's like it, it'll recognize the sort of right third of the screen, you know, for for tapping on it, and the left third for different functions, and, you know, you basically sort of tap on enemies to shoot them, but there's different weapons, like a sniper rifle and a shotgun, and um, things like that, and and, um, uh, it's, they haven't announced the price, but uh, the Dead Space game launched at, I think, $6.99 on iPad, so, um, Mm. you know, we'll see. You don't play as Shepard, you play as a different character uh, in this Mm. game, who, who won't show up in the main campaign. But all of this stuff, it, it's connected with with the co-op in, uh, in this uh, and uh, <laughs> you you know it's, so it's all, that. It, it'll all build your experience in what they call the Galaxy at War, which is like it all leads up to the final battle against the Reapers at the end of Mass Effect Three. And you know if you play the iOS game, if you play co-op, you can uh, uh, you basically help yourself in the war effort against the Reapers. Huh. I'm done with Mass Effect talk now. Thank That's okay. That was good for that. Thank fuck for that. You, you passed on the facts. Mass Effect. It's Mass a game. Effect. People want it. They yeah. want March, it bad. March 6th. I want to talk about something, actually. And it's you actually do. it's video game related. So there's no, a, it is. I've actually got... Yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on no. the Double Fine Kickstarter thing. Oh, oh yeah, this is insane. That's it's yeah. How much money did they make? Uh, yeah, so I they, don't know where they're up to now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. They this thing uh, started at I believe you know the press release went out shortly before 9 p.m. Eastern time, uh, Wednesday Wednesday night, mm-hmm. uh, February 8th. And what? Uh, well, Jim, you want you want to give a little ba- a bit of background on what the project is? For yeah, you? sure. Um, so as as Summit said, like. Last night, at the time of recording, uh, Double Fine set up a Kickstarter fund, and Kickstarter is that thing where someone wants to do a project, make a film or a a book or whatever whatever it is they do, and you donate money and get something back as like a return on the invest, not investment, but you know, a return on the product uh, when it's made and successfully funded, and you've got to make it like reach a certain goal 
otherwise you don't get any of the money. It's a very interesting project. It's not something I've ever considered for myself, but it's certainly a, a wonderful idea. And Double Fine took advantage of it. Double Fine, of course, headed by uh, Tim Schafer, the unluckiest man in video games at this point, who has made some critically successful games that have never been commercially outstanding. And he's he's always he's got the long end of the stick. I feel sorry for the guy. Um, yeah. And he was talking recently about making Psychonauts 2. And they he was like, well, no one wants to buy it. Um, give me a couple of million dollars and I'll do it. And then Notch... Uh, from the Minecraft maker Notch, uh, seemed to hint uh, he'd be willing to give him a couple of million. And I guess that's what gave them the idea, because they had a Kickstarter thing. They're going to make... They, they haven't really talked about what the game is in, uh, so much as it's going to be a point-and-click old-school-style adventure game, and Double Fine's roots are in that kind of you know Maniac Mansion, Day of the Tentacle, that sort of era of adventure games, and that's the kind of stuff they want to evoke. And they set up a fund. They're like, you can give us a minimum of fifteen dollars, a maximum of ten thousand uh, dollars, anywhere in between. Um, if you want to see us make a game, give us some money. I, I, I tossed fifteen dollars their way myself. Uh, a lot wow. of destructoid people did. Um, I felt I had to because. As someone who's been talking about this for a long time now, as I've become more pro-consumer and anti-corporate and a dirty, woolly, Michael Moore, fat neck beard liberal, I have been sort of very much against reducing the importance of the middleman, of the EAs and the Activisions, the guys that get between the artist and the consumer of art. Wait, and well, you, you, you said you've been, you're against reducing, you're, you're for reducing the... Therapy. Sorry, I meant to say against, and then I stopped and then reconfigured the sentence. But right, yeah. so you're against the middleman. I am against the middle... I'm against the middleman, and I'm for their reduction of their influence, uh, ah. because I see them as a big sort of... That little stopper lemming in Lemmings, who puts his arms out and shakes his head, that is, that is EA and all the others in the middle. And <laughs> this has eliminated it. This is... Like a direct, because it's almost like a pre-order, you know, you for $15 at the minimum amount, you get the game when it's made. Uh, they will give you a copy of the game on Steam. So that's a pre-order without a retailer, without a publisher. It was a developer that said, hey, consumers, help us make a game and we'll give you the game. And that's a beautiful, that's a fucking gorgeous transaction. That's yeah. what I want to see more of all of the time. And this has just, as, again, as someone who's been talking about this so much recently, um, and especially it's, it's been an increasing part of the Jimquisition, um, the, the, the video series I do, it's, it's just beautiful to see. I fucking love this. And, yeah, they, they made their goal. Within yeah. eight hours, they made their goal of 400,000. Was it 400 or 40? Yeah, well, well 400, so what they're... What's what's really cool 400, about this? Four hundred thousand. Yeah. So what's really cool about this? It, you know, not just that they're making the game. You know, that it's an old school adventure game. You know, that's great. But um, they're also having uh, two player productions come in and film the entire process. You know, if the game, they were saying, if we meet our goal, we'll have two player productions come in and film the entire game development process. And it's you know really going to be uh, an unprecedented look at you know, what game development actually is from start to finish. And so, you know, they uh, they have this little video presentation, and there's a text as well. And so they say, you know, we figure it'll cost about $300,000 to make this game and $100,000 for the filming of it. And so their goal was $400,000. They started this at around, I think, like I said, 9 p.m. last night, uh, you know, February 8th. And the goal is $400,000, and they gave themselves thirty four full days. The deadline is March 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And um, within uh, eight hours, I think it was just about eight hours, a little over eight hours, they had reached that $400,000 goal. It was insane. I was watching the number. Like, you literally can go to the Kickstarter page, hit refresh, and just watch that number keep going yeah. up. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm looking at it, and it's at $986,164 with <laughs> 20... Know. That twenty five thousand six hundred and fifteen people have donated. Uh, you can do the minimum is actually a dollar, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, the the minimum yeah. to get something is yeah, 15. but the minimum to get something is fifteen. That'll give you the game. They've got various other levels. You know, you can donate thirty. If you donate thirty, you get uh, an HD ten eighty p download of the documentary as well, and an 
you know, it go, goes all the way up to ten thousand. Yeah, yeah, which is a dinner with Schaefer, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's a, a yeah. Uh, you get lunch. With, it's that one already sold out. So someone, yeah, someone donated ten grand. Ten uh, fucking grand. There's yeah. about seven. I don't know if more have done it since, but this morning seven people had, had given them five thousand dollars. Yeah, the, wow. the five thousand uh, dollars that that's all sold out as well now. There, oh, ten, there were they they offered ten of those. Um, you know, the, the $10,000 level was lunch with Tim Schafer and Ron Gilbert, a tour of the Double Fine Studios, and, and you know, all the other previous rewards, obviously. Um, I'd love it if it was John Riccatello or Bobby Cutting. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> just uh, you know, always wanted a tour of Double Fine. <laughs> uh, for $1,000, $1, which there are still 43 of those out of 100 remaining, you'll get a mini portrait of you that's painted by the game's artist. Um, so, you know, they're all, all, this, all these levels. And, um, you know, uh, it's They're gonna crazy. break a million by tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think, well, they might even break a million. You know, it's 6.30 p.m. Eastern time right now. They might even break a million uh, within 24 hours. Yeah. I might have to just sit there and refresh it because that's fucking breaking news right there. Yeah. It's just amazing. I mean, this is – it. it if I was capable of crying, I'd have a tear in my eye. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm saving my tears for Jonathan, so I, I can't cry physically until I'm in his embrace. But it's <laughs> it's so gorgeous to see this. And, I mean, obviously it's not going to work for everyone. I think Double Fine are an especially beloved oh, yeah. studio. But it's, it's that step forward, you know? It's that crack in the ice. It's that... Proof that okay, this might be exceptional, but it does at least demonstrate that there's more than one way to get a big game made, yeah, and yeah. you don't the old ways of go like coming crack cap in hand to a publisher and begging for their approval might not be the way to get things done anymore, and and maybe it was never s supposed to be that way. I'm always been of the opinion that. Certain publishers are around just because they told enough people they were needed, and maybe, especially as digital comes along, we'll find out they're, they're, they're not so needed. Um, I think certainly the music industry has realized that, and that's why they're kicking and screaming against the internet any way they can, but it's fantastic. It is... You know, some people have complained because some people are wankers and that's what they do. They've come up with ways to criticize the whole thing. But I don't give a fuck. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that is a glimpse at one potential future and a very good one for developers and consumers. What are they complaining about? I don't know. There's all How sorts. You... Someone, yeah. oh, it's like a charity. Why don't they give the money to Africa? And Oh, like, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, but... I, this is like a pre-order system. They've turned Kickstarter into just another storefront. And it's like, dude, it was uh -huh. always pre-orders and stuff. Yeah. People yeah. are paying money to get something. Yeah, right. and so what's you know interesting with this is, you know, and for, in case our listeners are wondering, what they've said, what they said even before... Uh, they start, or in, in the uh, sort of uh, text here at the beginning, it, it all says that you know any money that they made uh, over, you know, once they surpass that four hundred thousand dollar goal, all of the uh, remainder of that you know, money, however high it goes, because like I said, it might reach a million dollars in the first twenty-four hours, and they've still got until March thirteenth. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it sure. Kickstarter's always run through, uh, regardless. Um, you know, they say that any additional money. You know, will go to just making the game better, making the documentary better. So, you know, they they'll say like, oh, you know, now we can afford, you know, maybe better voice talent or or, or you know, uh, uh, better art or or even, uh, you know, like I said, like Jim said, this is coming out on Steam. But uh, you know, they'll say, hey, maybe now with a uh, million dollars or even more, you know, we can develop, or we can do iOS versions and Mac versions as well. So, uh, you know, it really all is going back into the project itself, and it really is beautiful to see the sort of uh, just the developers going directly to the consumers, the, to the fans that love them. Yeah. yeah, and I'm excited at the prospect that the pay-what-you-want model, I hope this is evidence to people that the pay-what-you-want model should be adopted more and more frequently because, like I've been saying on Podtoid for a little while now, I feel like the future of consumerism and uh, future of sales is not so much um, you know, making uh, the product with the mass appeal necessarily, but the product that people yeah. really love deeply. So you think, and, Jonathan, Jonathan, uh, just yeah. to get your, your thoughts yes. straight, you think that if there are enough people that want something, right, mm -hmm. and they're willing no. to pay to, to get it, 
right? Uh-huh. That thing yeah, absolutely yeah. deserves a chance to to be made a real thing, yeah. Well, that yeah, but yeah. more so. <laughs> Just, yes more or so, no? Yes or no? Yes or no? I think everything has a, has a, should be allowed to Fantastic. be made. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to announce that I am setting up a Kickstarter fund myself. Uh, I I need to go to Baltimore um, for something. To and Baltimore. Where do you live, Jonathan? I live in. Uh, I don't live in Baltimore. Do you want me to go to meet you in Baltimore? <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> okay, I'll meet I, you in Baltimore. Right. So Jonathan Holmes is going to be in Baltimore, right? And I need to go there uh, to bum him. <laughs> I need plane tickets <laughs> and possibly some restraining devices and other tools, which I'll get into. Um, and I'm going to set up a Kickstarter fund. So feel free to donate. I'll need all your help if you really want to see this happen. At $15, you will get... $15. Uh, hey, look, uh, that's the minimum donation amount. $15, you will get, right? Photos of Jonathan Holmes before and after, plus an audio recording of me boasting and describing about what happened. For $50, ladies and gentlemen, you will get... An audio recording of Jonathan Holmes begging me to stop the entire act and me weeping afterwards. <laughs> you weeping? Yep. Well, how am I going to feel if you're <laughs> weeping don't, with joy? Or? Don't worry. I'm strongly suspecting you'll be unconscious by that point. For $150, yeah. okay? So we're getting big now. You mm. will get, right, the bed sheet. I will be cutting up the bed sheet, <laughs> all the stained bits, into ten pieces, Ugh. right? And for, what was it, did I say 150? For 150, yeah. ten of you... No, that was just 150. Will, oh, this is still 150? This is still 150. Ten of you will get everything okay. that, that has been done before. Don't worry, this all stacks, okay? So you'll get the audio mm. recording, the, the all of that, right? And the stained yeah. bed sheet, okay? And ten of you can get that. Okay, for two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, you'll get everything we just spoke about, right? Plus, okay, the video. Mm-hmm. Plus, <laughs> the you're gonna video. Film it? Of course, I'm gonna film it. <laughs> okay, Where, and... are you gonna just set up a? Okay. You've got this, right? Sorry. You've already agreed to this by what you said earlier. Otherwise, you're gonna be a hypocrite now. And Guys. finally. For six hundred dollars, one of you, one lucky man. I'm assuming it'll be a man. <laughs> that possibly sexist of me, but I think it's a good kind of sexism when this is what we're oh, talking. Oh, it's about. not too sexist. It's a little. It's one right. lucky guessing. investor will get the video, a piece of bed sheet, audio recording of Jonathan Holmes begging me to stop, photos of Jonathan Holmes before and after, and. The condom full of my white and covered in Jonathan's brown. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Awful. White and brown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think of that, Jonathan? That's a Kickstarter. I think you're gonna make you're gonna make an excessive amount of money if you do that. I, yes. I'm not kidding That's when I tell you thing. there. Yeah. Yeah. Someone will definitely that. donate the what was it, five hundred, you just said? Uh, I think it was six hundred for the grand Six hundred. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that within a week someone would donate the six hundred dollars. There are but, people but, out there. There were yeah. people when we made that joke about making a Poptoid movie, people were like demanding a Kickstarter be set up so they could donate to a <laughs> joke. Yeah, that that just wouldn't yeah. be possible. And this yeah. time I'm not joking, so <laughs> I'll, I'll meet of, you in but, Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yes, on, on the, no, on that subject, the, we're, we're uh, now up to $995,633. Oh, so, yeah. What, yeah. what people I'm need sure, to... It. I believe it's it's also oh, it's already broken the record for like the fastest and... Yep, fastest and, and uh, most Kickstarter backers as well. Like I said, oh, on, almost 26,000 people now have donated. The pay-what-you-want um, system, people pay way more than they have to if they are truly... Well, some do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. John Moore, a lot of people. Yeah. John Walker yep. at Rock Paper Shotgun was talking about this as well, and it is proof that people, when 
they are genuine fans of something, and when they genuinely want a thing, they like to spend money. I, I, yeah. I believe that. People like to spend money. Um, in an industry where gamers, as loyal as they have been to video games, are treated like, like dumbass thieves mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. most of the major companies, there is nothing but evidence that a gamer loves to spend money. And and this is true of a lot of consumers in a lot of mediums and across a, a range of products. Yeah, they it makes if they you feel like good you. to spend your own cash on something that you genuinely want. Sure. And, and and likewise, when you hate a publisher, you feel good when you steal from them because you hate yeah. them. So you're going to be good to the people you like and bad to the people you don't like. So if the publishers worked on being likable, they would make and they and if they did, they pay what you want system. Like I think Suda Fifty One's next game should be pay what you want because the one thousand people that love him will pay, you know, two hundred dollars each for his next game. Yeah, they'll and, go above and beyond. Yeah. yeah well the thing is I you know, you do have to be careful, you know, uh I think Jim mentioned this earlier, but I, I said something on Twitter last night to the effect of uh it's going to be really funny and sad when you see a lot of uh, indie studios or whoever, you know, start up Kickstarters eagerly hoping oh, to, yeah. you know, um, follow in Double, Stein, Double Fine's footsteps here, and then, you know, they don't come cl anywhere close to their goal. You know, here I think it's a, it's a unique case for Double Fine because, you know, they do have that, you know, two-decade history, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, not, not Double Fine itself. They, they were only But those Fine. creators, yeah, Ron Gilbert. But yeah, you know, Ron Gilbert Tim Schafer, and, uh, sure. and Tim Schafer. I mean, it, certainly on that level of success, I, I don't think... Because it's the same with, say, when Trent Reznor started doing Pay What You Want for his music, mm -hmm. um, when he put his album... So it's like, it's a brilliant thing to do, and it's a fantastic look at a great business model, but he is Trent Reznor, so he can afford to do it, and he can. Right. He's got the fan base willing to do it. So yeah. it is. It is a difficult situation. It's not, not like anybody can just say to people who don't know, you know, who aren't their fans, "Give me some money, please." Um, sure. But, but the but, humble uh, indie bundles, they're pay what you want, and a lot of people just choose they did to well, pay. Yeah, yeah, a thousand yeah, they, bucks for those. But I think yeah. that's again. There's like. They were games that had already been out, and there was a lot of buzz about them. Sure. Um, I'm certainly not saying like it's not going to work because this is exactly the kind of thing in the industry that I want that I've been like begging for. Uh, I just think obviously some like whoever goes into it, they they're going to have to explore different models, not just the Kickstarter thing. Um, but sure. what the Kickstarter situation has done is just demonstrate that. The old way of looking at things, where there was only one way to get your big game made, isn't true. I think that's right. the thing we need to take away from this. Not that, oh my god, I can set up a Kickstarter and make a fucking huge Steam game uh, mm -hmm. at no risk to myself. That's not going to happen. But what it does do is just, hopefully it should send a message to some other developers out there, possibly with their own big fan bases, that, you know what? You don't need to just hope and pray that Ubisoft's going to give you a sequel. Yeah, you. you so can, if Michael got... Ansel, Ubisoft's oh. not going to give you a sequel. But Fucking would... Kickstarter Beyond Good and Evil Two. <laughs> yes, and yeah. in fact, we've got a whole list at the Shutdoid, uh, collated, uh, compiled by Maurice Tan, that went up today of uh, dream games that the staff would like to see kickstarted into reality. That's true. Uh, I contributed to that little list, and so did yeah, you, yeah. Man. My, uh, yeah, I didn't have time to, to flesh out my thoughts on what I wanted, which was Rise of the Robots versus Primal Rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my vote was, uh, was for Mirror's Edge 2. I, you know, I know that the first game is it's, it's not a great game. Uh, it, it's one that I uh, it's a great concept. enjoyed almost in spite of itself. Yeah, but it's a great concept, and I feel like the game industry is all about uh, – you know, iterating on first games that you know were okay, and then coming back with sequels that are mind blowing. You know, uh, some of our favorite franchises this console generation. You have Assassin's Creed, Uncharted, and Mass Effect, all of which had first games that were people were like, "There's a nugget of something awesome here, but you haven't really fleshed it out." And then the twos and threes in those franchises are, are crazy awesome. What? Mm -hmm. Submit likes twos and threes. No. What? What? Assassin's what? Creed 2 was what? Sorry? Well, I... I that game Assassin's was fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah. And uh, people... A lot of people seem to really dig Mass Effect 2. And um, Uncharted 2, I think, was my game of the year in 2009. 
Super uh, Mario so. Galaxy 2. So no, that's, that's been... well, it's not like the first Galaxy was mediocre, so... <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying... <laughs> Do you like those games at all, though, Summit? Mm? Yeah, Galaxy's great. So, I mean, yeah. I've played like half an hour of it. That fucking <laughs> that Kickstarter thing is probably going to break a million before we finish recording. Yeah, I know, I know. It's 990, 90, 999, 425, yeah. and I'm refreshing right now. But another thing, because I mean, I, I mentioned Beyond Good and Evil being kickstarted. That's not going to happen probably because Ubisoft owns the rights, which is another. Right. Another thing that needs, you know, we need to put a stop to. I did a Jimquisition video on that when I was talking about copyright law and why I don't respect it because it, it's not, as it exists today, isn't what it was intended for. Um, and again, like when Double Fine make this game that has been, you know, I say self funded. I mean, it was obviously money from gamers, but they got the money using their own methods. They're going to own the rights to that game. And they will control its destiny. It won't belong to EA or Ubisoft or Activision or, or any other company. You know, people that aren't invested in the game industry and don't care about video games as anything more than a money-making endeavor. So mm -hmm. they can make a sequel if they want. They can do whatever they fucking want with it. And that is another thing this industry needs so much more than ever, is developers owning their own property and keeping their own stuff so that we don't have, you know, EA getting Dungeon Keeper off someone and then just sitting on it or turning Theme Park into a fucking freemium iOS con job. <laughs> we don't have to deal with that anymore because the developers, the people that made the games, the people that know where the games are going, can keep their own shit. So mm -hmm. I, I'm really excited about this and, and I, I can't wait to go digital. I used to fear it. I used to be afraid that... You know, Sony, Microsoft, EA, all these companies will jump on digital, control the market, set prices so high and know that there's no used game market or GameStop to rival them so they can do what they want. I say fucking bring it on. Fucking mm. bring it on because I reckon it will end up like iTunes where people will end up sort of being able to pick and choose what experiences they want a lot better and a lot more artists can directly put their art out there to consumers and we won't have to deal with fucking... You know, just corporate middlemen holding all the the, the cards. Well, so yeah. bring it on, bring on digital. Because if 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 this Kickstarter thing is any indication of what the future is going to be, it's going to be fucking glorious. By the so. way, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I just refreshed, and yeah, we're now over a million dollars. Holy uh, shit! One million two. Uh, two hundred and sixty-eight dollars, and that's from twenty-five thousand nine hundred and eighty-five donors, uh, which works out to an average of about thirty-eight fifty per donor. Mm. Oh, yep, yeah. they're ready. They want it. Self-publishing. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do some self. Can you imagine that, listener? While we were recording, it happened. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do that's the That's gonna news. be in the games we, Wikipedia. Pod toy did it. Pod to we did it, guys. We. <laughs> We drove the fundraiser. It was like a telethon. Yeah, and uh, if, if you're listening to this and you haven't donated and you'd like to, you can check it out at uh, tinyurl.com slash doublekick. Yeah, don't think that, like, because they reached their min minimum, which now looks fucking pathetic compared to what they've got now, like, that that's not a reason to donate because the more money they get, the better they can make the game. So, you know, keep giving them cash, man. Yeah, man. Questions? Let's do it. I didn't check them. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> I should have checked them while Summit was talking about Mass Effect. Um, oh. Someone had a question. Oh God. I need a Did poo. They? Dark Cloud. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Dark Cloud seven two three says, "What are your thoughts on all these HD remasters coming out of late? And what kind of remaster would you like to see announced?" Um, I'm for them. I like them. It's, you know, you don't have to buy them if you've already got the old game, but I like having sort of HD Silent Hill, you know, and, and, and stuff on my PS3 or 360. I'm kind of sad they didn't include Silent Hill 1, though, uh, in some form or another. You know, even put Shattered Memories on there or something, because I want those collections because they're collections, not so much because they're HD. I just like having it all together uh, with some new features and whatnot. So I for agree it to with be that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I wanted it to have the, the room on. Yeah. I, like, 
I like the room. I think it's gotten a lot of bad press, but it did a lot of interesting things. I like the room. It's a uh, it's a perfect game to have on a collection. You know, you yeah. maybe don't want to go out and buy it for full price, but to have it thrown in with some other games that you already want would be perfect. Yeah, it's it's yeah. an interesting curio if nothing else, and to have that on something that's calling itself the Silent Hill Collection, it's it should be it's notable in its absence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's a shame. So in general, I guess we've already quickly answered a question for a change. It's weird. We just answered it. Oh, Summit hasn't answered it yet, though. What do you think, Summit? Yeah, remakes. I, I bought um, the uh, Eco and Shadow of the Classes collection uh, last September because I'd never played Eco. Um, and I'm going to get to it eventually, hopefully. I love Shadow of the Classes, so I, I really want to. I just have, again, have to find the time. Sure. But. But um, I'd like to get the Metal Gear Solid one eventually as well. I've never played any of those games. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a great. It's great when you can look back and and Sony's done a lot of these with their PS2 uh, franchises where you you can get two or three really highly regarded games in one box on one disc for forty bucks. That's a great deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we love it. We we don't care that those are games that have already been around. Good game. Sell it again. That's yeah. what they do with movies. And it's, it's they... all convenient to me. And I've said this before again about, you know, wanting to spend money for something you like and that it's convenient, like it makes something more convenient. Um, because I think that's, that's how you beat piracy is to provide a more convenient service than piracy does, which video mm. game publishers aren't right now. Um, mm. And it's convenient for me. You know, I don't have to go and fish out a PS2 from somewhere and hook it up to my HDTV and have it look like shit. I can just put it into my PS3 and there it is, Silent Hill 2, and I can have fun again and all fun for all the family. So I like that. It, it makes it convenient. And I'm, I'm also kind of looking forward to getting Final Fantasy X HD on the Vita. I would love... Because, I mean, that game is... It was the start of the decline of Final Fantasy for me. But it was still a lot of fun. I still really enjoy and have good memories of Final Fantasy X. And, and I'm excited to have that on a Vita that I can just carry it around and play it. And try and look up Riku's skirt. Shorts thing. It's a drawing. It's all right. Shut up. It's all right. She's not a real girl. She doesn't get hurt. Don't yeah. get hurt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, he <laughs> <laughs> it happened. I'll There's shoot a... you with my havoc staff. <laughs> Is that what it's called? And he has a purple sword too. Got, he? That's one half of He Man's sword. Yeah, I thought that was a great idea. But yeah, the like brand stick is the, ha- the havoc stuff. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he's no, got two things. Yeah, yeah. Um. I was asked if I'm still playing Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm not. Um, I failed one of the five fucking security questions the game makes you have to answer uh, because I didn't take it seriously when I was answering them. And I got locked out. And about three or four weeks ago, I sent a message to BioWare's customer service saying, can you get me back into the game? And they didn't respond. And out of sheer bullheadedness, I have decided not to go crying to EA and say, I'm Jim Sterling, sort me out. I want to see how long it takes me as a normal person. Um, and so far it's taken about a month, so that's good, <laughs> isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, <laughs> Glaswegian God wants to know what I think of the Alien vs. Predator movies. They were fucking shit. Um, what else have we got? Tim O'Neill wants to know what you think of silent protagonists, and whether they help engage us in a game, or if they're annoying and distancing. Huh, I want silence... For the most part, I just want silence. I don't like voice acting a lot of the time. Not all the time. I'm not an absolutist, but, uh, you know, in general, there are more times when voice acting has taken me out of a game because I'm just thinking about an actor failing to emote uh, with their craft than I am the game. So, yeah, more often than not, I want a silent protagonist and a mostly silent game. I think it depends on the game. It's like... You know, when it, when it's a, a proper Western-style role-playing game, I don't need to hear the voice because it's supposed to be, like, your avatar in that world. It's supposed to be a, an extension of you. Um, Star Wars Your Republic was fully voiced, and I, I didn't mind it so much, but then sometimes my character just didn't sound how I, I think he'd sound, like, saying a certain dialogue choice I wanted him to say, and it's kind of disappointing. Um, First-person shooters, I, I do like them quiet for the most part. It sort of just helps me... 
it just feels weird when you're like that uh, like inside of a character that you're sort of seeing through their eyes but they're talking with some alien mouth you know it's, mm, it's yeah 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 i think I cg characters to... just in general cg characters i'm like you're not a human being so you shouldn't be talking human talk that's why animal <laughs> crossing makes sense to me because they don't look like people they look like you know yeah. ken uh, dolls or something so animal crossing katamari damashi i can get behind that sort of yeah. stuff. Well, you know Make... you know who, who doesn't have another so- sort of silent protagonist is is a uh, link and uh, I, I think you might be interested to hear, Jonathan, yes. uh, that I played a Zelda game for, like, the first time. A Legend of Zelda game? Yes. Whoa. So that's, that's like asking, are you pregnant with child? I know it should be implied, <laughs> but I like to clarify. Uh, so which uh, which one did you play? Uh, not a real one. I mean, not, kind of. Uh, so <laughs> with uh, I spent last Saturday night with um, a few buddies, and we hooked up some uh, game cubes and we played uh, Four Swords Adventures. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's not a bad game. It's not my favorite, but um, for multiplayer, you can make it a really fun game if you play it with the right people. Uh, the game itself doesn't give you much to go with, but it does give you a great canvas to kind of create your own experience with. So, uh, how'd you like it? I, You know, uh, again, it's, it's my first major experience with the Zelda franchise. Cause we played for a few hours. Um, and, uh, uh, it, you know, it reminded me of, like, the, the only similar experience I have is with, uh, Pokemon in terms of, like, you know, there's a 16-bit town and you go and talk to people and then you do tasks for them. Sure. Or, but it's like, action-based instead of turn-based, so you right. get to actually feel it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there was some cool, there's some pretty cool, Con, uh, concepts in there, you know. There's like the Ember playing level where they had uh, um, like a, a an alternate world that you would step into. With, it was like this portal that you'd go into, and like the world would be flipped, kind of. Yeah, they they've done that in a lot of Zelda games, starting with uh, Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo. They do a lot of dark world or flipped world, or you know, going into the future or that sort of thing. They right. they like to turn the world slightly on its head. Yeah, no, I, I figured it wasn't. Like a, a novel concept for the franchise, but uh, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I mean, um, y- you know, in terms of uh, your your four player c- team working together, you know, maybe you've got bombs and someone else has the the boots uh, mm-hmm. that, that let you jump and and you know all this other stuff. Uh, it was interesting and it's it, it was fun to do the because I, I w- in my friend's basement he's got or, uh, fr- apartment he's got this. Uh, like 84 inch projection screen so he had the main game on there uh-huh. and then uh two of us uh had like one of us had a game boy advance one of us had a game boy advance sp and then uh, i and another friend we had like computer monitors that he hooked up the game cubes to so i'm um, you know oh looking back cool. and forth okay. on this computer monitor yeah that sounds like a lot of fun. projection screen it's quite an experience yeah uh, so, yeah, that sounds yes, like a lot of fun. That. I'm glad you checked it out. You know, it's not indicative of what the real Zelda, the the main series Zelda games well, yeah, are that, like. That's... So don't go thinking. Yeah. Hmm? No, that's that's why what? I said I. You haven't played a real one yet, right? Yes. Right, right. Well, I hope you play a real one sometime too, because they're pretty neat. And it's a pretty exa- interesting example now that you talk about it. It's only the limits that they put on you that make. Four Swords fun. If you could just carry all the different items in your inventory like in a standard Zelda game, it wouldn't be fun anymore. So I've been really up on reminding people that the limits that a designer puts on the player is actually where the ideas and the fun often come from. So another example for me to tout. Thank you, Submit, for the touting. Tout. You touted it. Yes, absolutely. You touted it with me. Thank you. Um, And, oh, Jim, here's something for you. Jim? If you're still still there. Of course I am. <laughs> uh, ap- apparently, there was a, an Activision investor call, uh, earnings call earlier today, and um, they've sold 20 million Skylanders toys. Oh, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> well done, them. Well done, them. That's insane. That's cool. It is. Well, there's like, I think it was Michael Pactor who said they, uh, that was that thing wasn't going to do very well. <laughs> was it? He makes a lot of bad calls. Oh, but man. I wouldn't be surprised if 10,000 people just bought, you know, 
two thousand of them or something. The the people who like Skylanders love it. People really got like, into it. Yeah. yeah anyway, I've, I've got like literally four minutes. I've got to wrap this up. Uh, you're gonna got a lot of questions. Um, oh yeah. I might do yeah. that. I'm More gonna, questions. Questions. Yes. I'm gonna be quick. Um, Anton. Beaver Rover Rich says, I hate you, Jonathan Holmes. Don't ask me why. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people hate me. Uh, I inspired hate from the start, and I'm used to it. So, uh, yeah, I understand. You can't help it. There's something about me that rubs you the wrong way. I apologize. I'd change if I could, but I can't. There was, so there was a review on iTunes that said you were a tool. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people think I'm terrible. Don't terrible. think don't don't think it was just you though. He called me that was the same one that called me a pig. He oh. said he was a pig and he, well, he who said, did he like then? Um Taru liked, he said it all went downhill when Taru oh. and now that Max goes sort of big, again he claims that my um is it pedophilia or not drives him off halfway through the show, which again isn't true. Oh, it's that guy. So um, he likes probably the Destructoid show. He and, should and probably his... just watch the Destructoid show and fuck off and not <laughs> not ruin my podcast by downloading it because him downloading it actively makes it worse. <laughs> oh, I'm a tool. That's okay. Tools are good. They, no, dude, I'd they... Rather a tool mm. than a pig. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. so it's just, yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Flintex says, what's more offensive, Amy or Never Dead? Amy is a worse game. Never Dead is more offensive just because of how blatantly lazy it is. Uh, mm. The studio clearly was using excuses with its main character not being able to die and cutting corners. Um, I mean, this game, you can be attacked and killed. I say killed, I mean, the character can't die, but you can be incapacitated um, during cutscenes uh, when the camera cuts away to show like monsters sort of coming or whatever. If there's any other monsters still around, the game doesn't pause the action so you can be fucked while you're unable to control <laughs> or even see anything. Um, that's how lazy it is. And I think because they thought, oh, well, he can't technically die, they didn't have to bother, like, doing simple things like that. So that's more offensive intellectually and morally. I gotta, I gotta say, though, I don't... I'm just guessing. All we can do in life is guess, right? So it's just a guess. I'm gonna be humble about it. I'm not guessing, though, that they were lazy. I bet they worked really hard, but then the publisher was just like, oh, okay, done. Get it out there. Uh, th th these people, they busted their, their humps, Jim. They humped. They busted their humps. But then eh, then they just released the game while well, it still know. sucked. Yeah. It they work looks, hard, these guys. That's it all It just I'm looked. I mean, you know, I can tell when a game has... When it looks oh. sincere and honest and, like, they tried their best. And I yeah. think I've seen enough to know when a game just is fucking lazy. And just you think they just didn't try? Why wouldn't oh. they try? They like to try. It's rebellion. Oh. They, they don't fucking, try. They used to make good games and then it all fell apart somewhere. And yeah. I said in the review, I said, look, sometimes a game is bad because, you know, budget wasn't up to scratch. They didn't have time. And sometimes a bad game just is lazy. Sometimes a bad game mm. was made just to be a video game, just to have uh. something on a shelf. And that's yeah. what Never Dead looks like to me through and through. I mean, obviously, I wasn't in the studio, but with the corners that were cut, the very basics that are not in place, it's like, I'm sorry, I don't care how much time you didn't have, I don't care what budget you were looking at, there are things not in that game that are in budget games. Mm. There are, so their priorities were off. I, I, I guess so. I mean, they probably spent all their money getting me fucking, what was it, Megadeth. It's the, Megadeth, the, yeah. The, the fucking <laughs> title song. So, sure. you know, I just, when, when there are games on shelves that retailed at launch for 20 bucks and they do more and are better put together and have more care and thought put into them than this game, which was desperately just trying to be Shadows of the Damned or Devil May Cry, like just copying everything they did but did it cynically so it wasn't heartfelt in any way and then no i i do not think there is genuine attempt to be a good game going on well that's that that's i haven't that. played it so i shouldn't even talk about it i've played it a little bit but not enough to uh review it yeah so is there any more questions we have time for? Uh, I'll do one more. Simpson Simpson fan one two oh four says, "What is the scariest enemy in a game you have ever encountered?" 
and his was the stalkers from Dead Space 2. Really? I don't think anything is scary in Dead Space 2. You just kill them. You just kill everything that comes at you, and then you just are fine. Um, scariest enemies, eh? <sighs> it's pretty scary in Animal Crossing and Halloween. Have you played Animal Crossing and Halloween? Animal Crossing and Halloween. Uh, it's pretty scary, no, I've, I've seen them on a few holidays, but not that one. That is scary. What, do the enemies I, try to eat you or something? Like, well, I don't know. Well, okay. I'll, I'll say it briefly. I wrote an article about it once, but it's Animal Crossing, so nobody read it. So I'll just quickly recap. Animal Crossing. You play the game uh, 365 days a year. Every single day, there are villagers who are at, at benign at best and, and downright lovable and charming um, at worst. That's as intense as they get. It's just become lovable and charming. So you never have any conflict. You never have any problems. There's a build-up to Halloween. They start saying, oh, you can start buying candy in the shop around October 1st to build up. Oh, Halloween's going to be so great this year. You buy candy and it'll be really fun. And, and every other holiday in the game, you can build up to it by buying stuff. And then when it actually happens, there's a special event that's usually uh, purely joyful. But in Halloween and Animal Crossing, you buy candy and then everyone in the city turns into a violent mugger with oh no. a uh, pumpkin mask on. And they're running around at a speed faster than you can run. So it's like a full uh, maze of Pac-Man. Your town is just Pac-Man except a devilish evil Pac-Man. Because the villagers will approach you. And if they catch you, they say, you got any candy? And unless you give them the candy, uh, they uh, beat the crap out of you and turn your clothes into crap clothes. Or steal something from you. They literally mug you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if you uh, run out of candy, you need to you need the candy to find the one guy in town who looks like everyone else is trying to mug you, but he's um, he's a legit special holiday visitor who oh, yeah. will give you the pumpkin couch, Jim. He'll give you huh. the pumpkin couch. If you okay, I've go. I've got to wrap this up. I need to go like literally now. Uh, that was my. I, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's not your fault. Uh, it's my fault for talking about rubbish earlier. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening to Podtoid. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can catch us on Destructoid.com. Um, you can catch Max Goville on the Destructoid show Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, God, I can't get through this. Uh, Jimquisition, EscapistMagazine.com, and GameFront.com. I do stuff on now. And, oh, fuck, I've got to go. Bye. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no. Oh, sup home, sup home, Sunday, sup home. Yeah. God, I'm Thanks. literally going to shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me on, Jim. I appreciate it. No worries. It.